three minutes. Hello and welcome into a uh, Thursday edition of the Computer America Show, and it's this, the third Thursday of the month, and it's our All Linux Show with Marcel Gagné as our Linux correspondent, and uh, uh, we're going to be starting. We're going to be talking about Linux and Minecraft and games. That's what the topic is going to be for tonight. So sit back, relax, enjoy the show, and uh, we'll be starting in about one minute. By the way, one minute until showtime. You can certainly talk if you want to, because th this is behind-the-scenes stuff that we're here now. Oh, all right, all right. So, so this isn't like officially on the air yet. When does the oh. officially air thing start? But, but they're like, you know. Yeah, ten o'clock. You heard the count. We have there, there's there's music and there's dancing and yeah. you know there's there's well, uh, there's all sorts of things, anyway. party things happening, right? Music, anyway. <laughs> okay. Cheers. Yeah. Uh, Okay, anyway, I Am I think... allowed to drink on air? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, don't be flagrant about it, but yeah, sure, whatever. This is actually a very nice Cabernet. Yeah. Fifteen seconds. Oh. You can talk, just don't oh, okay. talk. <laughs> don't talk. On that... <laughs> don't talk. I don't know, mixed messages. Yeah. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Here we go. Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live, it's America's longest running national radio talk show on computers, Computer America. Hosted by national columnist Craig Crossman. Look for Craig's weekly column in your favorite newspaper. This show is being beamed nationwide at ComputerAmerica.com. Keep it here for technology news, computer products, guest interviews, and your phone calls. You're listening to Computer America. Hello, and welcome into the Computer America show. It's the nation's longest-running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers. Computer America is heard around the world and coast-to-coast. Coast. And I'm your host, Craig Crossman. And I'm your co-host, Ben. And it's Thursday! <laughs> it's Thursday, which is the day that comes after Wednesday. Uh, well, so, you... day after hump day. Yeah, exactly. We, get, we usually get the energetic about Friday, but I, I'm trying to do it for different days of the week, and it's not catching on. But right. anyway, uh, well, hey, wait, wait. Thursday is Thor's day. You could bring in a hammer and hold it over your head. That's right. <laughs> Call it Mighty Mjolnir. That's that's where it actually comes from, Thor's day. I know. Of course I know where it comes from. Friday was Friar's day. I, mean, I watched the Avengers, you know, so I know all about that. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, welcome to a Thursday edition of the Computer America Show. And, of course, it's the third Thursday of the month. That means it's our all-Linux show. And uh, with our Linux correspondent, uh, Marcel Gagné. And uh, um, he's going to be here. He's here with us. And uh, if tonight, look, if you have any questions about Linux tonight, is the night. We're going to have the answers for you. If any questions about Linux whatsoever. Now, the way you, you can get in touch with us is pick up the phone, give us a call. 347-884-8881. That's 347-884-8881. I'll get you on and get you through. We also have email, if you like, live, L-I-V-E, at ComputerAmerica.com is our email address. You can also join us in our live interactive chat room. Just go to our homepage at ComputerAmerica.com, right there in the center of the screen. So it says interact with the show. Just click the chat room slash live video button, and it'll take you come to a split screen. On the left-hand side, is, uh, it'll ask you for the chat room your nickname. That's the name you'll be known by when you go in there. Your nickname, your password, all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then if, you, if you've ever entered a chat room before, that's how you do it again. Just forward, just click the connect button, and your browser will move you in there. Okay? Um, and also on that same page, if you'd like to not only listen to Computer America, but watch Computer America, you can watch our live Computer America video stream. Also, uh, Computer America stream, video stream uh, that we provide. Also, you know, it's worth mentioning, though, and I know on some websites I hate it, uh, but the live video stream for Computer America auto starts. You know, so sometimes you open up a tab and you don't realize where that noise is coming from. Uh, that is the Computer America chat room screen. So, you know, be, you are warned, it's an auto starter. Yes, it is. Uh, of course, if you're using uh, uh, Google Chrome, you'll know because you'll see the little speaker appear in the tab. Ben pointed that out to me. It was a very nice feature. And you pointed that out to me. Yeah, yeah. I, see, we, I would open like 10 different tabs when we were doing computer news, and, and inadvertently one of them would, would be an autoplay, and, and, and I'd have to shut the whole thing down because I couldn't go through all 10 tabs finding out which one was playing. 
But with Chrome, uh, Google Chrome, it actually puts a little speaker icon, a tiny speaker on, in the ta on the tab that's playing audio. And then you can just click it and just stop it, which is a really nice feature. And I have not seen that anywhere else. I have not seen that in Firefox, nowhere, just uh, Chrome. Uh, so Ben put me onto that. It's a nice. It's like a little tiny red circle. It looks like a target, you know. It's like... <laughs> no, actually, it's a little speaker that appears up there. Is that what it is? It looks like a little. It looks like a little red circle on mine. Well, maybe the Linux version. Interesting. 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 Yeah. Yes. On the Mac version, it's um, it's uh, a little speaker, a little black ah. speaker. Ah. So anyway, and so anyway, um, um, now here's the thing. Uh, uh, the gentleman you hear talking hasn't been introduced, so why don't I introduce him? Marcel Gagné. He's the author of several books, including Moving to Linux, Kiss the Blue Screen of Death Goodbye, now in its second edition. Other books he's written include Moving to Ubuntu Linux, and his newest title is Moving to Free Software. He was also a Linux Journal, uh, a Linux Journal monthly columnist. His column was titled Cooking with Linux. Marcel was also a regular columnist for Linux Magazine, and he was the senior editor and columnist for Ubuntu Magazine and a number of other publications. Uh, please welcome author and correspondent, and now Computer America correspondent, Marcel Gagné to the show. Marcel, hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? Nice to see you. Yeah. It's nice to see you. I mean, I remember once upon a time back a million years ago when we first did this show, and I just heard you. You were just like this voice, this disembodied voice on the other side of the world or something, you know. <laughs> oh. you, know we are, you had to take it on faith that Craig actually had a rest of a form. That he actually existed, exactly. For all I knew, he was just like this clever AI that somebody had going on the other end there. <laughs> I was written by Ben. What can I tell you? <laughs> there are so many bugs. I've been thinking about just scrapping the whole project. <laughs> Tear it down. Yeah, exactly. Right. Put that down. Uh, anyhow, uh, what we do, as I said, there's many ways you can call and reach us and speak with us. But what I ask Marcel to do, as our Linux correspondent each month, is to come up with an underlying theme or topic that we can discuss. Uh, and talk about, but again, you can interrupt with that with your own Linux questions if you like, um, uh, via the different means that uh, uh, we just told you. However, uh, the tonight's topic that Marcel has selected is Linux and Minecraft. <laughs> All right. Well, should I, should I explain how I came to this? Yes, because well, it's actually the more broader definition is going to be Linux and games. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. You see, here's what happened. Like, um, I I have I have two sons. Uh, the youngest uh, happens to be uh, seven years old, and um, and of course, you know, they've both had tablets, and the oldest is ten years old. They both had like Android tablets in their hands for a couple of years now, at least, um, and uh, probably longer than that actually. But anyway, um, so last year, last year, my uh, seven year old, who was six years old at the time, was into um, was into trashies. Remember the trash pack little guys? Do you remember trashies? Uh, I think so. They, they're, like, they're, they're like these little rubber guys who were like you know your 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 little friends who live in the trash can, you know. So you had like different types of bugs rotting, rotting food and all sorts of things like that. An old slice of pizza, a, a rotten banana, you know, that had turned gooey, and like it was just like wonderful. So I mean, I got about a hundred of these things, and I thought, you know, he's never going to get over this. This is like you know, this is. Of course, I've forgotten what happens when you're six years old, or you're five years old, or seven years old. Uh -huh. So eventually, of course, he got over it, and. And then this thing caught his attention. It was this game that he started playing on his tablet called Minecraft. Now, of course, you're gonna so, somewhere along the way here. I'm gonna have to tie that into Linux because you're gonna go, dude. Minecraft just got bought by Microsoft. Are you out of your freaking mind? Mm -hmm. You know. But, but I'm not totally out of my mind, and I'll explain shortly. We'll get there. But anyway, so he had the tablet, so he's playing on this. And I don't know if you know this, but if you play Minecraft on a tablet, whether it's an Android tablet or whether it's uh, an Apple tablet or something like that. Um, you can actually set it so that it's got like a little local server so that essentially if you both happen to be on the same Wi-Fi network you can play with each other okay so I actually started playing Minecraft with my you know seven-year-old he just turned seven at the time he turned seven in June I started playing Minecraft with him because he'd have his tablet and I'd be playing on my tablet and we'd create all these little worlds and so forth so this is this is like great fun and of course you know if you had like a whole pile of people in the same room on the same Wi-Fi network you could all share one world off one tablet and play with each other so this is all very cool and um, and what I dis what I started thinking at the time was um, you know he's gonna get bored of this as well but he wasn't he didn't get bored of this because of course what happens he goes to school 
and all the other kids at school are also playing the same game, right? So they're all going nuts on Minecraft. That's This is all they talk about. He comes home, he talks Minecraft, he talks Minecraft at the table, and, and you know, goodness helps help me. I mean, all of a sudden, I'm totally into Minecraft. It's like, dude, I gotta sit down and play my Minecraft game with my kids. So you know, I started doing that. So I've got you know my little my little Android tablet here, you know, and I gotta start playing Minecraft with them. Do you know how to do this? Do you know how to share a game in Minecraft on a tablet? Do I need to tell you this, or do you know all that? Ben, I think knows how to do it. Uh, no, uh, you're you're running a server, uh, you know, from from whichever computer, right? Like you actually have a saved. Server and then the, and, and then everyone connects to it. Yeah, but on the tablet, what you can do on the tablet, and of course I, I'm I'm gonna you know no, nobody's actually gonna be able to do this you know when they're sitting on the other side there, but um, you've got a local server multiplayer here. The people that are actually watching on Google Hangouts can take a look at my tablet, and it says Google it says um, local server multiplayer, and what that means is if you've got the tablet that's got this on, and you're the one that started the world, everybody else who's playing with you is gonna be able to see that world and connect to your tablet. Okay, so all of a sudden you sit there and you start up a world and you come up with a cool seeds because there's a website out there, by the way, if you're a Minecraft nut and you happen to be playing on a tablet, epicminecraftpeseeds.com. P-E stands for either personal edition or pocket edition. I don't know. If there's somebody out there who knows, please write it in the chat room or call it in and say, dude, it's pocket edition or personal edition. doesn't matter. It's Minecraft PE anyway. So epic Minecraft PE seeds. So all of a sudden you've got these great worlds that you can start up and you can play games together on, you know, on Minecraft. But then all of a sudden it was like, wouldn't it be cool if I could get all his friends at school to play with him as well? Yeah. Okay. So all of a sudden now it becomes this thing where, you know, I can't get everybody to connect the tablet. You sort of could, but then the tablet has to stay online all the time, which is, you know, kind of difficult to do. And then you have to pass it through your router. Now, I've got a nice router. I've got a Netgear uh, Nighthawk router there. Oh, those are nice. That, that Isn't is that nice. awesome? Isn't yeah. it gorgeous? It's like a stealth fighter. <laughs> it does. It looks great, and it's got like three antennas, and it's super sleek, and you swear that the damn thing is going to... Can I say damn on the radio? <laughs> you, you just did. <laughs> 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 the dang thing. I said dang, actually. I said D-A-N-G. Oh, okay. <laughs> you swear that the dang thing is going to take off at supersonic speed in your room. It's awesome. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. But I digress. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so you could do that. So you could pass the port on the tablet, but then you're no longer you know, on the same Wi-Fi network. It, you know, the, there are issues associated with that. Anyway, so I started looking up, and I actually found that there's a project out on the Internet called Pocket Mine. Okay? And PocketMind is PocketMind.net. It's really, really simple. P-O-C-K-E-T-M-I-N-E.net for the people out there who are doing that sort of stuff. And PocketMind um, lets you deploy a server on a variety of platforms. Now, you can do it, believe it or not, on Windows, on a Mac. But if you really want to do it, if you really want to do it special, you deploy it on a Linux box. Okay? And on a Linux box... Um, if, I mean, it, it just works better. Um, I run an, an Ubuntu uh, Linux server, 14.04, and, um, and we deploy the server on there. This is an open source project, okay, which means if you want, you can contribute to it and so forth. There are a whole bunch of different plugins that extend the functionality of the server, so you can do all sorts of fun and cool and funky things. And I'll get into what some of those things are uh, in a little while there. Uh, but most of all, most importantly, if you've got a server that's you know available to other people on the internet, you can all play together. Is cool. that cool? That is very cool. That is very cool. And you know, I I've heard some uh, some really nice instances of this, and I'm sure you know uh, if you don't have some examples, there are lots of them. And real quick, my favorite one was I think it was the country of either Sweden or Norway, one of those countries over there, actually, you know, like their their Department of Tourism or something like that, made a one-to-one -one scale ratio of the country. And people were able to connect to it, and they, you know, they were able to just run wild in this world that they created from all over the world. And, you know, people were building forts and, you know, claiming it for France. They were, you know, trying to take, like, the, uh, some Americans tried to take over a, a portion of the country. Like, it... it just it's not just in your neighborhood or you know you know like you're mentioning your kids and your friends' kids. You can open it up to 
everyone everywhere and have people invade you. And and that's the beauty. And I, I apologize for that. I was actually trying to uh, I was trying to grab the bookmark for a YouTube video, and the darn thing started playing. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. So I apologize. I apologize profusely. I will I will fall on my on my sword. Here, uh, I have a little. I have a little. Uh, I have a little uh, fighter plane here, and uh, see, I have a little fighter plane. I will fall on my fighter plane. Okay. That won't do. Um, <laughs> so, so I apologize for that. No, you're right. It is cool, and there are actually, uh, you know, aside from running your own, and obviously, what I want to, you know, I'm, I'm more interested in, in running my own and doing your own thing. But you're right. There are a lot of people out there that have created public servers that are themed around a. Uh, you know, goodness knows how many different things that you know everybody can jump on, join in, and and have fun with. Um, um, but let, let me just um, uh, let you know that we have one of our, our uh, younger listeners who has a question for you. And, uh, and yes, Mar young listeners, I love young listeners. Okay, his name is Lucas, Computer America, Craig Crossman. Hi, Lucas. Oh, right. it is cool. and, and Lucas, hi guys. Um, you have to stop. You have to stop the uh, uh, live video because we're here. Yeah. Live. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or or mute it. Okay. Uh, you there now, Lucas? Yes. Okay. Um, what you call it? was I say? But the um, yeah, with the Minecraft that he was just saying, Marcel. Um, with uh, when he was saying about the Minecraft, uh, everybody's addicted to Minecraft now. Like even my little brother, though he's like nine. Um, how old are you, Lucas? He's he, yes. No. How old are you? I'm twelve. All right. Okay. <laughs> Carry on. Um, and Alex plays Minecraft with his other friends on live on Xbox Live. So, and um, and he made like all these worlds. And um, one time I uh, he made like this house, and it was like crazy. But um, the server I tried to help my brother with it was like really hard to do, but. We didn't have like the router like he did. The, um, what was that router again? He said the uh, Blackhawk or something like that. Night, Star Night, um, the Nighthawk. <laughs> the, huh? The Nighthawk by, by Netgear. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because I don't know if Charter supports it yet. That's why I have Charter Communications. Um, I don't know if they support it yet, but I was trying to see if I can get a better router. But um, but how could is Minecraft free? I mean, how could you do that? Um, well, the the game Minecraft itself is not free, but what you can do is you can use a tablet. Are you in the chat room by any chance, Lucas? Yes, he is. Uh, okay. I am not at oh, the moment. Oh, you Let left. me get over to my... <laughs> okay, it, 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 it doesn't matter. I'm going to put it in the chat room, and then you know we'll, we'll make sure at some point that it winds up in the show notes there. Um, but um, the... Uh, there, there are a couple of different ways. I mean, the the, the company that the company that we, that we've got up here is Rogers. Uh, the, that's the one that we've got, um, and they have their own router with their own Wi-Fi and so forth. And sometimes, unfortunately, trying to fiddle with the router that the cable company or your internet provider gives you is a little bit difficult. So what you can do, and and, and this is why I do that here. If you have your own router, you can actually plug their router into your router. Okay, and then uh, depending on the company, you can call them up. And I don't know if I'm—I don't know if this is actually the question you're asking. Um, you know, you can tell me if I'm totally out to lunch here. But you can call them and ask them to just bridge their router so that it's just a single point thing. In other words, their yeah. router comes in. There's no Wi-Fi on their router. Okay, so you're essentially what you're doing is you're saying turn off the Wi-Fi on your router because I want to do my own network in the house. Basically, and at that point, there's only one connection, and then you can decide which yeah. devices your Wi-Fi goes to. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, because basically, you've always, I've always learned that never plug a router into a router. However, most of the routers will allow you to turn off and basically just make them into a smart switch, you know, or or even a dumb switch, and and it just it's like adding extra ports to the router, and and that's the mode that you need to uh, uh, select. Uh, in 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 the in the uh, router that you're going to plug it to, and then uh, then you then you're certainly welcome. You know, well, it's going to work with what what Marcel is doing, but you have to do that. Otherwise, you're going to get into trouble plugging a router into a router, leaving it fully operational. Well, two two different things oh, happen. Oh, you can there. tell by that, can't you? What's that, Lucas? Sorry. 
you can get you can get in trouble by that by you can get in trouble by that by uh, who your provider or no, uh, no uh, 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 technical difficulties. Not, tro- not they're not going to bust down your door because you plugged a router into a router. <laughs> it's more like technical difficulties. It just won't work correctly. Yeah, it won't work correctly. I know that my my the, uh, somebody tried to do what you call it. Um, a friend of mine tried to do a U torrent, and you know how you go on some of the websites and you can download like free movies. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that tonight, Lucas. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! It came to a bad ending. I don't want to talk about it. It came to a bad, bad ending. Yeah. All right, we don't want to talk about that tonight, Lucas. Uh, we don't want any, but we don't want anything coming. We don't want anything bad happening to us either, do we? <laughs> not really. All right, but well, I'll be seeing you. So, yeah, seriously, the big thing to remember is that you're going to want to have them bridge the router. In other words, to, to just turn it into, you know, just a single point of entry from the router into your in-house wireless router. And what you're looking for is something called port forwarding. Um, if you, generally speaking, the, the port that the, uh, you know, the, the Minecraft thing runs on is, uh, I mean, there's an external port that you can use. It's 19132 is kind of the default port. And you can just redirect the traffic into your internal network. Uh, a little later on, uh, a little later on, I'm going to tell you something about uh, you know how you can set up an external computer. And believe it or not, it's not that expensive to do that, especially if you've got you know a crazy parent like me who's willing to set up a <laughs> who's willing to set up an external server for basically the whole school to jump on and have fun with. I'm right, you know they're going to be like playing in class. <laughs> <laughs> That's their problem. <laughs> All right, Lucas. All right. Well, yeah. Thanks well, for calling, Lucas. Right, I appreciate you have it. A good night. Yeah, and you have a good night too. And you keep listening. We'll see you in the chat room, okay? Okay. All right. I'm in the chat mer- chat room already. And li- keep listening. All right. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. All right. Uh, again, the number uh, three uh, is three four seven eight eight four eight 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 one. Opens up a line. We'll get you on and get you through. We have any questions about Linux? Uh, uh, Marcel Gagné is here. We're talking about. Gaming on using Linux, and uh, specific, specifically, we started off with Minecraft. So, um, why don't you continue on? Uh, By the way, Marcel, I think yes. it is absolutely gutsy what you do. You know, you take uh, your first Linux show solo, and you tackle something that Linux is notoriously, uh, you know, like that is the one holdout from for many people going to Linux is that gaming is not the strong suit of Linux, and you just come on and tackle it head on. Kudos. Oh, well, well, thank you, but but I would turn that around and tell you that since Linux runs the infrastructure of the freaking internet, the global <laughs> interconnected network that ties us all together, that most of the game consoles in the world are running Linux, that most of the hardware out there that pushes that pushes uh, that pushes you know networked online gaming and so forth, supercomputers that have all these these distributed network uh, you know uh, role playing games and so forth are all built on Linux infrastructure. I would argue that it is Linux that is at the head of gaming as opposed to anything else. Everything else is just a client. Linux I, runs the freaking show, baby. <laughs> I have no doubt that the workhorse, the, the, the beast of burden, is <laughs> Linux. But the stallion, the Mustang, the beautiful, sleek racing horse is un, un, you know unfortunately because that's what most people have is a windows so you know you windows gets it first well i you know even even there that's sort of fading as you know because uh, you know and and oh, yeah. you know, I, we're digressing here but but the fact is i mean nowadays you know you're talking you know your 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 bleeding edge xbox you know or or um or ps3 ps4 or something like that i've got a i've got a, a a wii that you know doesn't get much use these days here but we've also got a ps3 that you know gets played with pretty much every single day and uh, it's actually amazing and awesome what you can do on some of these game consoles and frankly despite the fact that you know i can sit down in front of my computer and I can play games. And by the way, you know, since we're talking Minecraft, Minecraft runs on a Java backend. I'm talking about the official Minecraft for PC hmm. here. Java? So you can you, you just sorry. say Java. That's that, that's something you can't say on radio. I mean, that's a bad word. All right. I don't like Java. the the, <laughs> I hate the the, the runtime that the runtime that makes you think of coffee. How does that sound? Uh, okay. <laughs> the runtime that makes you think of coffee is is actually the the uh, 
the runtime that Minecraft, like that you can go over to Mojang and download, which by the way is like twenty four or twenty five or thirty dollars or something like that. Uh, you know, to to get a um, to get to get the uh, basically the the license to play the game and so forth. That runs on a variety of platforms as well, and it runs under Linux just as well as it that runs under a Windows PC. You don't really notice any difference whatsoever. And obviously, the higher performance your PC happens to be, the better it's going to run. But under Linux, I can go out there and I can download the jar file uh, from the Mojang site. Okay, the Minecraft, you know, the Minecraft company site. I can download the jar file because I've already paid for it. I already have an account on the Mojang website. <laughs> yes, I'm. Yes, I'm that Minecraft geeky. <laughs> I have an account on the Mojang site. I'm Jugdish, by the way, in case anybody wants to find me. Um, that's 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 my Minecraft name, Jugdish. J U G D I S C H. Where does and that? If, come and if you're really nice to me, I might even tell you where that name comes from. <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> I do that a lot. I digress a lot. Um, anyway, yeah, you can go. It's available. There's actually, I mean, on the site you can download it for a variety of platforms, including a Linux desktop. And all you need basically is the uh, is the coffee runtime. Do you feel better, Craig? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just had an issue with Java today, and it, it, it's just it's it's awful. I mean, I mean, thank gosh for 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 uh, HTML5 because you know you don't really need it anymore. Or C++, don't forget C++, dude. Yeah, I mean, really. I, it's just so uh, bad. Anyway, I, no, I you know, I, I don't disagree with you. It's a, the, the only upside is it's not as bad as Flash. Okay, can we agree with that? They're, they're both bad. So <laughs> let's I hate both of them, but okay. Yeah. Well, again, with HTML5, you don't need Flash. You don't need Java. That's do all that stuff in there. That's, you know, ex except that there are, and I, I hate to put it like this, but at the moment there are limitations about, I mean, you can do you can do an amazing number of really cool things in HTML5, but you're not, but most of the stuff that you find that are interactive sort of games and so forth are kind of like webby type games, you know? I mean, they're pretty cool, but they're not something that's quite that intense, you know? Yeah. It's coming. It's coming, but, you know, intense standalone play games, you know, the sort of thing, um, th they're not, it's just not there yet, and 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 unfortunately, there's a lot of time, a lot of energy, and a lot of development that's gone into building things on Java, and you know, and every one of these other platforms and so forth. They're not going to go away overnight, you know. Uh, much as we'd like them to, they're not going to go away overnight. The nice thing about Flash is that Flash really was just you know a display format for the web. But you know, what 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 boggles my mind is that I can understand if you have legacy and you and you have a lot of time investment in uh, on Java or Flash. And you, when you're coming up with a new version, and it's going to take you time. But what what boggles my mind is that a company will come out with a new product from the ground up. They come with something brand new, and then they they do it with Java. Why not just we'll do it with HTML5? Hey, you're so naive. It's adorable. You know, it's it's really why fight do, fight. <laughs> why Craig? It's because you know even though. It, maybe some developer is so fluent in, in Java that you know not everyone is that they feel comfortable doing that or maybe most likely it's because even though you don't like it it is compatible with so much okay it, it doesn't run well and it's so very frequently targeted by you know uh, by you know security I threats just, but it does run I just got well, a camera from D-Link you know video surveillance camera can't use it with Java because it uses Java and it's a brand new camera you know but they use Java well, one of the things that, that you, you'll find happening uh, with some of the larger packages um, is that they'll actually distribute Java with the package. Because, of course, then it becomes a question of, well, you know, do I need Java Runtime 6, Java Runtime 7, Java Runtime 8? You know, uh, is it going to work with that one? Can I use the open source Java? You know, I mean, there's a, there's a, it's it's it can be a real pain in the butt, but when you're talking about a standalone application, you'll often find that some co that companies will distribute here. You know, here's our package. Here's the Java that comes with it as well. So it's not like you have to worry about whether your particular version of Java on the system is actually going to work properly with the software that they've developed because they they gave you the whole package that already works together. And I think that's actually a pretty good way to do it. You know, um, that that in in a sense is really true cross platform. I was going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I almost swore there. <laughs> can't say that on the radio either, but okay. <laughs> seven words you can't say on the radio. Come on, all together now. <laughs> Actually, they're more than seven, but yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, all right. Well, so so anyway, I don't know how we got on the Java kick here, but um, uh, let's get oh, back. 
Yeah. Okay. Go on. Go on. Yeah, Java. It was it was the idea of running, you know, being able to actually run the the actual full game inside. Because let's face it, the right. full game that you can download is sitting at like a I don't know version one point eight point one. I think I saw uh, today when I was playing. Uh, I was playing Minecraft today. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> I was doing other things too. I want to point it. I was actually working as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. And reading news and tie and you know and chatting on Facebook and so forth. But I was actually working as well. I just want to point that out. Anyway, um, the version that's actually developed for the PC, okay, that Java version that we don't like, um, is actually more up to date than some of the other stuff. That's that's where a lot of the development happens to be going. And if you take a look at the stuff that's on the tablet, as much fun as the tablet is, and it's come a long way in the last year, by the way, I should point out, like the Android version, it's come a long, long way. It's still not where the uh, the PC version happens to be in terms of development. So if you're like a serious gamer, whether you're running on a Linux box, you know, and, and by the way, you know, no, I'm not going to jump into that right now, Ben. I don't, I don't want to get pulled in that direction right now. <laughs> but but um, the, the version that's actually going to run directly on your desktop as opposed to on the tablet is going to be far more advanced. It's going to have all sorts of cool things. It'll have, like, you know, the beacons, you know, so you can build a beacon and, and you know, be able to spot it from anywhere in the world that you're living in, you know, that you're building in and so forth, um, as opposed to just building a tall tower and sticking a, uh, a torch on top of it or something like that. Um, that's what you're going to want to do, and so you're going to have to put up with Java, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, listen, we're at the uh, bottom of the hour. Time is really flying by here, but uh, uh, we're on our all-Linux show. Marcel Gagné is uh, here with us tonight. We're talking about Linux and Minecraft and gaming. Uh, we got calls coming in. You're listening to the Computer America Show on the Blog Talk Radio Network, the Boost Radio Network, the IRN Radio Network. we got a News Tips Bullet Review coming up. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, have you heard about the No No Hair Removal Device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for No No Hair Removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my No No. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No No has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors, so it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the No-No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card, and you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No-No hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-5415. That's 800-953-5415. 800-953-5415. Hi, this is Craig Crossman, host of the Computer America Show. You have important meetings to schedule, your company's getting ready for its IPO, and you're in charge of the PTA fundraiser this month. So how do you coordinate everyone to be available at the same time? Are you still using emails, phone calls, even text messages to schedule meetings with a group of people? How's that working out for you? (laughs) That's so great, huh? It's a fact that every day, millions of people suffer from scheduling headaches. Well, with Doodle, scheduling meetings with a group of people is quick and easy. With Doodle, you can easily propose available times to each member. Each one checks off the times that they are available, and then you simply pick the time that works best for the group, all in an easy-to-read display that integrates with your existing calendar. Nothing could be more simple. Give Doodle a try for free, and like millions of Doodle users, you'll truly see how easy it is to find the perfect date and time for all your meetings. That's www.doodle.com. Here we go again. It's Marty Winston with a news tips bulletin review for Computer America. This time, the ScanSnap iX100 mobile scanner. Our favorite cheapad desktop scanner is a Fujitsu ScanSnap model, so when they told us about their iX100, we said send it. It's entirely portable. Charge through a USB port, that's one option for connecting it to Windows or a Mac. The other is Wi-Fi which gets even more interesting when you team it up with one of its apps for Android or iOS. It's a little smaller than, think rectangular solid, one and a half inches by two inches, kind of squarish, by 11 inches, less than a foot long, and it unfolds a cover to become its paper pad. It comes with the same ScanSnap software suite to allow immediate scans to any of a variety of formats, 
including options using OCR, optical character recognition, turning those shapes of words into actual words. Bottom line, the very portable ScanSnap iX100 is a small and lightweight road companion that can easily save more than its own weight in the paper you don't have to take along. This is Marty Winston with a News Tips Bulletin Review for Computer America. Welcome back to the Computer America Show. Uh, it's the bottom of the hour, and you know, uh, before we get back to uh, to Marcel Gagné and uh, talking about Linux, and I I'm, I know we're moving at a snail's pace, but that's okay. You know, it, it it's a conversation. So yeah. Yeah. you know, and, and plus uh, we run the show, so you know, <laughs> we can do what we like. Uh, but before that, uh, we have a caller. Okay, uh, and I understand he's calling from Indiana, Computer America, Craig Crossman. Hi, caller. Yes, hello. Thank Hi. you for taking my call. Sure. Um, with the Minecraft theme, I got to thinking and wondered, with the core of my question being, what role does Linux have in developing new technologies? And the specifics is, uh, we've heard of smart grids or maybe even microgrids for um, electricity. Well, I'd like to gamify a user interface and reward um, the usage of that interface so we get the most out of our energy at the community or city level. And um, I think Linux could play a role there, but the, of course there could be money incentives for the players also. So uh, just if you'd like to reflect on that core question of Linux and technology development or uh, how it might fit for my example, that's uh, the crux of my question. Um, I'm I'm going to try to answer that in in the uh, you know uh, by by taking it uh, to the community perspective. I mean, the, the big thing about Linux is that uh, you know about Linux development is you have to remember you are actually talking about you know a high end development platform. Um, it it sometimes sounds crazy, but there is more Linux out there than there is Windows than there is Apple. I mean, Linux is literally everywhere so it's um and one of the reasons that it is everywhere i mean it's it's in your thermostat it's in your television it's in your game machine you know your uh, your game console it it runs the internet you know it is truly literally everywhere in the world there's no way that you can exist in the online world without using linux on a day-to-day -day basis so it's a powerhouse i mean you know you can do pretty much anything uh, on a linux system uh, where it does shine, though, you know, is on the server back end. So if you're looking for some kind of an application in which the community can participate, then the kind of development that you might be looking at is something, you know, that that runs on a console back end. And obviously, I, I don't know the, you know, the depth or, you know, or the uh, the final intent to what you're trying to do, but. I mean, it could be something as you know, it could be something that's uh, that's Android based, so that basically, you know, uh, people are able to to take advantage of uh, you know the the game development that you're doing and use it um, um, on an Android application that then feeds back into your server application and so forth. The other thing that's kind of nice about doing something in the open source marketplace um, is that if you actually do use it as open source, in other words, you open the development of your project to the people in the community, uh, you're more likely to find people that are willing to contribute. And if the project is exciting enough, you're going to find people that are willing to contribute literally all over the world. Remember that Linux itself, the Linux kernel, was a project that began August 25th, 1991. Actually, it began before then, but it was released to the world by an email from... Uh, uh, from uh, Linus Torvalds, the uh, creator of the Linux kernel, he sent an email out to the world. He said, "Hey, I made this uh, this new kernel. It'll never be as cool and exciting as Unix." So how wrong he was, <laughs> you know. But here it is. It's you know, I, I think it's really cool, and uh, you know, this is what I've done so far. And he invited other people to join in and help in the development. That's the beauty and power of an open source development project. If it's a good project, if it's something that is of value to the community and you are willing to open it up to the community, 
other people will join in in the development and the real power then actually starts to happen because you don't just have one person working on the project essentially what you're doing is you're you know and if you want to use it in terms of a company okay you're essentially bringing in a whole bunch of employees except they're not employees they're partners in the development of your project and that can be really really exciting because you can build something big and exciting and fascinating and get input from a whole lot of people just by virtue of the fact that it is open, you know, and it's built on a platform that people don't actually have to pay for. That's another thing, you know, uh, if you're building it on the Linux development platform, everybody can have one free, you know, and uh, and that includes, you know, all the development tools, all the compilers, all the applications, all the server-side stuff, all the graphical stuff. It's, it's fantastic. It's the great equalizer, and uh, you can build cooler, better things in an open source environment than you can in pretty much any other environment in the world. There you go. That's my proselytizing for the night. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you so much. All right, Carl. You're welcome. Me. Yeah, and thanks for calling, and uh, keep listening. Uh, yeah, oh, open it up. Open it up. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. If it's a great project, and you open it up, and you, and you show people what you've done, and you say, hey, this is what I've done. This is what I've started. Come on in and help me. Um, you can build a beautiful thing. All right, there you go. And thanks for calling the show, and keep listening. Uh, the the uh, three four seven eight eight four. 8881-347-884-8881. I'll get you on to get you through. Marcel Gagné uh, is here. And uh, as I say... We, we, uh, By the way, real quick, you know, yeah. uh, I, up front, I do not use Linux. I'm a fan, but I do not use... Actually, no, I, technically I'm human, not a fan, but... Uh, you get, whatever. Anyways, um... <laughs> to his comment, you know, uh, he he mentioned something there that um, you you may have glossed over, or you know, but I just think is, you know, something that Minecraft can do very very well since it is kind of you know back on kind of on target, is that uh, gamifying things. I mean, even though Minecraft is just a game, you know, you, you play with your son, your son plays it with, with all his friends. It's obviously enjoyable from a very young age, but I mean, even then. Uh, you know, there are people in Minecraft that have created computers. I mean, you know, even though it's run on a computer, they have created instances of computer uh, of computing inside of Minecraft. And, you know, something that, that the Carl was talking about was gamifying, you know, a system where, you know, think of home automation. Imagine, you know, putting it in a putting your house in a game like scenario and then you could you know essentially take your avatar walk up and you could you know interact with your toaster with your oven with you know with with you know with your light switches all from your avatar within a game gamifying something that would you know otherwise be tedious or confusing or just any other interface would be difficult games are easy and people like games so if you can gamify something it's going to make it that much more attractive well gamification I mean when people talk about gamification they, they, they're usually talking about something that goes well beyond just you know the idea of playing a game they're talking about <clears throat> excuse me building in a reward system for what's happening as well I mean, there's like there there are countless articles and books and psychological papers that are written on this, um, where you you know what you do is you start out really really simple. It's like you know you open it up and you say, oh look, you know I've given you this much here, you know, and so forth. It's like, oh congratulations, you were able to solve this incredibly easy puzzle, you know, which anybody could actually solve, but you solved it, and here's you know here's your first thing. I mean, I give you the example in Minecraft, for instance. What's the first thing that happens? You know, you join the game, you go out there, you find a tree, you knock three blocks of wood from the tree so you sit there and you mine three pieces of the tree because you need wood as the building blocks of everything else you're gonna do in the game and what's the first thing it does your first achievement getting wood <laughs> you know, it's like that's your first achievement congratulations you were able to get wood it's like oh wow is that ever cool and that's what gamification in a lot of ways is it's not just turning things into a game okay but it's using it's using the the theory of game and rewards you know and accomplishments and so forth to get people hooked on the idea of continuing to play because there's a reward okay and then it's a little bit harder and then I get a reward for doing something that's a little bit harder and then I get another reward and then it gets harder and harder and harder and to get that next reward you have to work even more you have to be able to do all sorts of things like if you want to be the leader of the pack you have to tame five wolves into dogs you know mm -hmm. that takes takes time. You got to sit there and play the game for God knows how many hours or days that you know to be able to get to the point where it's like, hey, I got my award, leader of the pack. I mean, this is, it's it's important 
you know, uh, when you're developing anything in a game-like scenario, to keep that in mind. You're not just trying to make something that's fun, but you're trying to reward the person who's playing the game in some way. So you always have to keep that somewhere in your head. How is it that I'm rewarding the person, you know, for being part of my universe, for playing my game? And that that was, to some extent, what the I think the caller was actually talking about, getting uh, rewards out. Yep, yep, yep. But 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 that's a question that I couldn't answer because because I don't know what his application specifically is. However, you know, getting more people involved, you know, and again, that that is where open source shines. You know, the fact that you can get more people involved. Ben, we will convert you. You will run Linux eventually. <laughs> I, I've I, I've done it before. I've had you know my I, I've had my live boot USB and CDs and that kind of thing. I've tried it out. I have nothing against it. I just am so live DVDs, live DVDs. Because <laughs> they're he, everywhere. He likes playing Pretty games that, that 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 are Windows based, unfortunately, like World of Warcraft, that type of thing. So you know, I think that's the limitation. I mean, uh, let let me. I mean, let me ask this, uh, Ben. I mean, if you could play get the games that you like to play, like World of Warcraft, and and run it in Linux, would you? Would that help you? Or? Honestly, no, not really. I, I, you're talking to the wrong person. It, it's it's my brother's the one who enjoys you know messing with things, tinkering. Like he will make his computer so optimized to what he likes. He'll he'll have his own version of Linux, and then he'll gut out whatever you know uh, whichever distribution he's using, and then make it his. He'll, he'll make it. It's no longer Mint. It's no longer Ubuntu. It's no longer whatever you know uh, distro it is. He'll make it his own. And I think that's where Linux, you know, shines. Is you can do anything you want with it. You can make it efficient. You can make it optimized to you. But me, I mean, I'll I'll change for Windows. You know, I'll I'll bend over backwards for Windows. It, it's but it's dude, not, dude. Dude, the whole point of computers, the reason people like me are into this and the reason people like you should be into it, <laughs> it's the whole point. I mean, the, the idea is you geek out on this stuff, man. You know, you, 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 you learn programming, you learn computers at an early age. Why? Because you have the power to get See, the machine to do whatever you want it to do. There's These also are the digital slaves, baby. Tell them what. Dude, man, don't bend over I, for them. I get it, but I mean, it's also that it's also a thing where you know I have helped people with their computers before, and guess what? They undoubtedly use Windows, and they don't want to convert you know over what? to Teach Linux. Them to use Linux. I and knew you were have say to that. help them out. Okay, Teeth, give them the power. Show them that they are capable. Let them geek out. Let them understand the power of the Force. In this case, it <laughs> oh, happens to be Linux. <laughs> I, I I don't doubt it. It's just Windows is a big juggernaut. You someone has it's to be on it. You know, you know but it's, it's not a big juggernaut. It's not a big juggernaut. It's no longer the big juggernaut. I realize that on the desktop, I, I agree with you completely. Okay. Oh, yeah. But but Linux owns the world now. Face uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Between tablet, smartphone, any uh, I mean, you know, yeah. instances of Linux. You know, we used to joke are, about Linux. We used to joke about Linux world domination. Okay. It's happened. <laughs> I I think the joke that we use here uh, on Computer America was every you know which year is the year of the Linux and it snuck up and now apparently every year is the year of the Linux. Yes. <laughs> oh wait, I hear music. Huh. Do we have special effects now. <laughs> I don't know. Who did hey, that? Who's doing that? Right. I was playing. I've got the power. <laughs> oh, okay. By the power of Grayskull. All right, who remembers that? Come on, Ben. How old are you? Uh, by, by yeah, the power by the power of Grayskull. Of what? I have the power. No, but that okay, too? we're digressing. Listen, I actually did want to continue talking about Linux and and uh, and Minecraft. So here's the thing. Yes. So, okay. So can I do that? Can I go back on topic? Yeah. Am I allowed to do that? You're absolutely not. All right, Ben. No, I blame no, no. you. <laughs> <laughs> I blame Ben. Uh, it's not just that you know I have ADHD. I blame Ben. Anyway, 
Anyway, so if you've got your tablet, okay, I've got a. I, I posted a link to a video in the chat room, okay, and, and again, I, I'll we'll we'll try to make sure that that's in the show notes as well. It's a YouTube video that I put together that actually shows you how you take your little your little tablet that's running wow. Minecraft and you connect to an external server, and that's important because if you're going to run a server that people are that people are are going to be able to use in the community and so forth, you have to first be able to connect that tablet to an external server, and that's relatively easy. Um, you go into your tablet, and there's a little button. You know, when you start to when you start to play in Minecraft, it says play. So when you're hitting play, what you do is you click. Um, you know, so uh, here I'm going to do it right here. You click up at the top. It says new and edit. What you do is you click edit, and edit allows you to add an external server. A button will appear that says external, and that's where you will actually connect to that external server. Now there are actually a lot of servers. I'll tell you that right now. There are a lot of servers and, and Ben actually mentioned this earlier on uh, with what was it Sweden? Is that mm -hmm. what you said? Yeah. Okay. There are a lot of external servers uh, like Lifeboat and stuff like that where you can actually connect to them. Uh, somebody from Lifeboat uh, you know who's online there is like oh I mentioned Lifeboat. Awesome man. Um, you know uh, where they where they run Hunger Games, you know, or Sky Wars, or something like that. Um, you are actually able to connect, and uh, they do have uh, a lot of these servers have plans where you spend a little money on a monthly basis, you know, to get VIP status and you know extra things and so forth. But the fact of the matter is, anybody can join these servers and play for free, you know, or a lot of these servers anyway. You can join them and play for free, so you don't have to create your own. Um, but to be able to connect externally, uh, if you follow the little video that I showed, or if you just you know click the external button and then you put in the address of the server that you want to connect to, you can actually play externally. The beauty of running your own, and the reason that you know we'll get into that next, is that you can control what happens on the server to a large degree. The one that I run, I only give the address out to my kid and the friend and his friends in his class. Okay, I have absolute power over that server. If somebody comes in, and if, if you know what a griefer is, no, what is a griefer? I saw that in the right right up. What is a griefer? Uh -huh. A griefer, okay, is someone who causes you grief That's in the Minecraft world. Really let's say that you spent days. Ben, you want to explain what a griefer is? Griefer is some is think of a troll, but a troll you know can say things, can you know uh, kind of be leading. A griefer is someone who takes it to the next level. They will get in your game, they will put TNT everywhere, and they will blow up anything you have tried to make. They will make your game unplayable. Exactly, and you can and some of the things that people have done, like my my son's class has built. Like they've got um, a dozen worlds at least. Like you can warp between worlds and so forth when you run your own server. They've built at least a dozen worlds, and there are complex structures. They have a hotel. I swear, they have a five-story hotel that is built out of gold blocks with rooms. There are signs beside rooms inside this multi-story hotel with the names of the people of the kids in the class. They have their own freaking rooms with their own cabinets <laughs> and their own stuff that they store inside. Awesome. I'm not kidding. It is incredibly awesome. I have gone in there and seen the amazing things that these kids have created. And, and you know, they're, they're young kids. You know, they're seven, eight, nine years old, you know, because occasionally you get their brothers or sisters involved. But, but they're young kids and they have built this awesome, awesome, amazing place. <clears throat> now, unfortunately, there has been occasionally a kid who's joined in from the school who was a griefer, who wanted to essentially cause grief. That's what griefer is. It's somebody who's causing you grief. Okay, and what they've done is they've gone and they've put lava blocks over top of all of these buildings. So the oh, next day no. when the kids log in, yeah, so the next day when the kids log in, they suddenly find that all the buildings are covered in lava, you know, and the game is completely unplayable. So what happens, my son comes to me and says, Dad, they've destroyed all our buildings. But because Dad built the server and Dad makes nightly backups of the server, Dad simply restores the worlds back to the state ah, that they were in the day before, finds the guy who logged in and put all the blocks in and permanently ban his IP address so he can't come back in. <laughs> I have no mercy. Dad is, the, Dad is now the hero. 
Dad is now the hero, you know. To, and the, so that, that's a but, great. But you got to do that. You can't let you can't let these people get away with it, you know, because the next day they're the next day they're gonna, you know, the next day they're gonna do something worse, and then you know, ten years from now, uh, they're well, I, you know, we won't get into international terrorism on this show. But <laughs> by the way, I took your link that you put in the uh, in the uh, chat room and I put it to the show notes. So now, if you go oh, thank to the show you. notes, it's the link is right there that you can. Craig, you're awesome. Thank you. Okay, there it is. All right. <laughs> anyway, so. Uh, but you might as well put the link for pocketmind.net as well because we'll talk about that in a second. Put the put the chat room and then I'll I'll transfer it to show notes. Okay. All right, awesome. Um, anyway, so so um, pocket mind here. I can talk and type <laughs> at the same time, right? Um, there we go. I've done it. I've done it. So, so you, redeem, you redeem the entire server by something that we say all the time: back up your computers, back up your Minecraft servers. That, yes. That's not a yeah. link though. Pocket mine is a dot pocket. Yeah. H H T T P colon slash slash pocketmine dot net. Okay, I got it. All right, <laughs> all right. Uh, continue on. Anyway, um, right. So so when you actually run your own server that way, not only can you do backups and so forth, but of course you you have the power to control what happens in there. And of course, you know, I, like I said, my son is seven years old. I also want to be able to provide a safe environment for him and his classmates to play. All right, as in, I mean, you know, let's face it. You know, anything can get dis discussed in some of the public servers. Uh, you know, uh, bigger kids can give. You know, can can hassle younger kids. Uh, people can be mean, that sort of thing. But if you're the one that's running the server for your family or for your, you know, for your kids or you know their cousins or whatever, then you have some power, some control over what happens on that server, and that's a very very cool thing to do. Um, Link is up. Thank you, thank you. That's very good. Okay, so you've got a, so you've got a Linux server. So I mean, you could be running a Linux server inside your house, and I and I've I've done that as well. And of course, that was cool because uh, the the other thing about running uh, running it on a server, of course, is you've got a permanent environment at that point, right? So it's not like you shut it down. You shut down your tablet. You go back into it. You forget. This is a permanent environment that everybody can go back into, and then people can come in at various times as well. So you know, somebody's playing in the evening. Somebody's playing early in the day. You know, you go out, but somebody's actually working and so forth. Craig, make an '80s track mix. Ooh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, has, has everybody watched uh, Guardians of the Galaxy? Of course, everybody's watched Guardians. Craig, have you watched Guardians of the Galaxy? I've seen it. Yes, uh -huh. it's fantastic. How about you, Ben? Have you watched it? Uh, no, not yet. No, Ben. No. <laughs> I haven't. Ben's not big on movies like he used ben, to. Ben, 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 <laughs> Ben. You're gonna learn this. Uh, movies and me, uh, you know, eh. Ben. Yeah. Yes. Anyway. Ben. <laughs> Well, the last movie you went to, he saw the uh, the, the the Titanic, the, right? <laughs> the, the Hobbit, the five. You'd, you'd be surprised. That I, I saw the last Hobbit movie, and then before that, I think I saw a movie about three years before that. Okay. Well, anyway, in Guardians of the Galaxy, he has this cassette tape in a Walkman. Yes, he's I. Like, he's like on some freaking other planet. He's traversing the galaxy with his ne'er do wells, and he has a cassette tape. Which is labeled "Awesome Mix Number One," and you know what? It's fantastic. It's the the movie was just great, and I just you know so you know somebody wants Ben to make an '80s mixtape. This was like an '80s mixtape. Actually, there's some stuff from a little bit later as well in there. But it was just it was awesome. It was just great. You know the idea that that somehow this this cassette in this old Walkman is is a feature of this, you know, interstellar romp, you know, of aliens trying to take over the galaxy. It was just so cool. <laughs> am I right or am I right? Yeah, it was very it was different. <laughs> it was just great. Anyway, uh, okay. So so <laughs> so <laughs> What were we talking about? Yeah, get, get it together, Marcel. Okay, so you go to the Pocket Mind site, and you'll see that there are links there for downloading it. Okay, for for Linux, for Mac, and so forth. Uh -huh. um, really, if you click on the if you click on the uh, link for whether it's Linux or whatever, you'll find that there is like a a little line that you can make. It's a wget line which passes to a bash script, and all of a sudden, uh, what you're doing is you're installing all the code. It's downloading the code. It's installing it. You don't even have to you don't have to compile this thing. You don't have to do anything uh, magical or bizarre. Um, um, then you have a question and answer session, and magically, after a few seconds, you've got a server that's up and running. Now you don't have any of these cool uh, plugins that I'm talking about and so forth, but it's really, really that easy. 
Now, if you don't have a server that's running at home and you want to do this for your family, and by the way, this is a really good way to actually, you know, learn something about Linux. You can, if you want, very inexpensively rent a Linux platform, a Linux server out on the internet without spending a humongous amount of money. Um, I happen to like, I mean, is a, am I allowed to mention companies here, Craig? You know? Yes, of course. Yes. Oh, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, 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 I don't work for these people, I don't know who they are, but I, I love using these guys. It's a company called Linode, L-I-N-O-D-E, linode.com. And uh, what they do is they deploy SSD servers, you know, a 50 gig servers, 100 gig servers, multiprocessor, that sort of thing, all running different flavors of Linux. This is a place where you can basically go on, you give them your credit card. I know Amazon does this sort of stuff as well, but you know what? Um, it's Frankly, Linode is very inexpensive. Uh, it's great support. They have like this wonderful interface uh, where you can create and deploy servers and so forth. So you can go out there and you can spend, uh, I think it's like 10 bucks a month or something like that. 10 bucks a month will get you a fairly substantial little Linux server. You, you specify the distribution that you want, make it simple on yourself, get Ubuntu 14.04, and, uh, and, you know, literally like five minutes later, you've got a fully, you know, a, a fully functional running Ubuntu Linux server that you can access over on the internet. And this is the key here. Remember Lucas earlier who was talking about how he gets people to come in and use uh, his tablet in-house and so forth? Uh -huh. Then you don't have to worry about that. Because yeah. it's a it's a it's a it's a server that's routable on the internet. Anybody anywhere in the world can access this thing. Now, this is what I do for my son and his family. I'm running a Linode server that everybody connects to externally over the internet, and I don't have to worry about you know uh, whether there's you know the traffic is in my house or anything like that. It's out there. It's always available 24/7. Um, and you don't spend a lot of money at it. I mean, yes, you know, you're spending ten bucks a month, but hey, you know, it depends on whether you think that's you know uh, within your price range. And personally, um, we're living in a subscription society. You know, you subscribe to services, including right. computing services, and uh, this is an easy way to do it. Linode.com. Let me put that in the uh, in the chat room here. Yeah, put that in the chat room. Then I'll put that in the show notes, and I'm going to continue to add the links uh, as you put them in the uh, chat room. Listen, we're at the bottom, the uh, top of the hour here, and uh, so we're going to take a, a quick break. <laughs> and then uh, come back with more. Uh, Marcel Gagné, our Linux correspondent, Linux expert, we're talking about Minecraft uh, and games and running your own server and 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 you know being king of the uh, of the games in your own home and uh, having full control over it. This is the Computer America Show. We're gonna take a right quick break and be right back. Stay with us. Just a few moments. Broadcasting live, it's the only national radio talk show on computers to air every weeknight, Computer America, hosted by national columnist Craig Crossman. The first hour's behind us, but there's still more of tech news, tech talk, and your phone calls. We're being beamed nationwide at ComputerAmerica.com. You got computer problems? Bring them on. You're listening to Computer America. Computers run the world, and we run computers. Call us or send us an email to live at ComputerAmerica.com. Hello and welcome into Hour 2 of the nation's longest-running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers. This is the Computer America Show, and I'm your host, Craig Crossman. And I'm your co-host, Ben. And we continue on with Marcel Gagné and our all-Linux show tonight. Uh, just put the... Uh, uh, Linode uh, link in the show notes. Uh, we just keep adding them. Just go to the show notes page at computermaker.com. You can see all of them there. Uh, we're talking about uh, gaming, games on computers, but more than that, uh, just showing how to do it yourself and, and some wonderful resources out there for Linux users that let you put you in charge of your own server. So if a calamity happens, uh, you have ways to rectify that. Um, and uh, and so uh, let's continue on with it. And by the way, if you have a comment or question for our uh, for us having anything to do with Linux, three four seven eight eight four eight 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 one three four seven eight eight four eight 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 one. We'll get you on and get you through. Uh, so continue on. Uh, All right. Um, I'm gonna just uh, I'll talk Linode just for a second here. Um, now Linode obviously is not the only you know, a company. It just happens to be the one that, you know, I like to use. Uh, you can decide where you want your server deployed. Uh, they've got, you know, different places. Uh, what is it? Dallas, Texas, Fremont, California, Newark, New Jersey. Yes, there is such a place as Newark, New Jersey. 
people don't believe that, but there really is such a place. Uh, London, United Kingdom, Tokyo, Japan, we know those are real places. Newark, you hear about the, that in movies, but it, it, it's there, I swear. Anyway, um, but you can download, you can actually uh, select a server for $10 a month, and here's the cool thing. Yeah, you, you say, um, um, you were talking about the idea of, um, of whether or not uh, you know you wanted to set up something in your house and so forth, uh, Ben. Um, the what you can do with this is you can deploy a whole variety of Linux distributions, and it's like you know, well, it's ten bucks a month. You know, if I try you know ten different servers, it's a hundred bucks a month or something like that. But it isn't. It's ten bucks a month, and then it's divided by all the little tiny wee bits. So let's say that you wanted to spin up a server because you wanted to try. Let's you know setting up your Minecraft server or something like that, but you don't know whether you actually want to continue running this thing. If you're only using it for like a thirtieth of a month, they'll credit you that amount. Okay, so you spend the ten bucks up front for the month, but you know maybe you only wind up spending you know sixty-seven cents on the server or something like that. Um, I have several Linodes that run like twenty-four-seven, three hundred and sixty-five days a year. Uh, for you know, for some of my customers and so forth, uh, because you know I'm, I happen to be an independent computer consultant as well. But uh, so I, I have you know some of these servers running out there for a variety of purposes. But this is actually a good way if somebody out there wants to try something like that. Obviously, you need a credit card to be able to do this. But you can fire up, spin up a Linux box, play with it for a couple of days, and then just you know shut it down and get rid of it, delete it, and don't worry about it. Uh, they've got you know they've got different Debian distributions. They've got CentOS. They've got uh, They've got Ubuntu. Um, you know, you decide what it is that you want to run on this thing, um, and uh, and they come in like in a variety of sizes. For ten bucks a month, you have a twenty-four gig disk, a single CPU, two terabytes of data transfer, um, and uh, basically one gig of RAM. Which you know, on a Linux box, it's acting as a server, as in you know, a non-graphical system. Uh, that's quite a bit, and it's a great little Lino to uh, to run your uh, Minecraft server on. Wow! Wow! So, uh, um, um, what's the next step? <laughs> okay. The next step is I'm going to paste you another um, another link in the uh, in the chat notes here, uh, which is uh, how you actually go about and do this. So this is a little video that I created. The first one, both of these are videos that I created. They're YouTube videos that I personally created, and they show you all the steps that you go through to uh, to not only set up your tablet but set up the server and uh, connect on the internet as well. And again, so, if you, and if you want to see all these links, if you're not in our chat room, and you go to our show notes page, and it's right there at our uh, oncomputeramerica.com, right there in the, at the home page, uh, we're actually listing all the different links that uh, Marcel is talking. Because if you're listening to this archive, if you're not listening to us live, you're not going to have access to this. But with the show notes, uh, everything that we're talking about tonight, all the different links are there on the show notes page for your for your uh, uh, edification. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to just jump back in uh, uh, and, and just mention one more time the idea of community projects. The, the beauty about community projects like that is if, if, you, if there's something that you personally are getting excited about, you know, I think it's great if, if, you know, if people get into, uh, get into something and it's, you know, they become passionate about it and they want to learn how it works. I mean, it's great to play. It's great to use something. But, you know, just to, just to be able to participate, to be part of of the process of creating something can be uh, can be really heady, you know. It's it's sure. it's it's fun. It's it's you know, like I said, you know, it's it's the geeking out thing. But if you go back to that Pocket Mind site, you'll notice that there's a link there that says plugins. Uh, there are forums there and so forth. But those plugins are things that you can use to um, to enhance that server. So so you went out there, you downloaded your Linux server, you set it up and so forth. And and by the way, um, now you can invite all your friends. They can go in. You're running a Linode, you know, or a Linux box over on the internet. People connect to it. You know, the kids are playing. They're having fun and so forth. But uh, maybe they want to do things like you know uh, teleport to other worlds. You know, so they want to create multiple worlds and teleport to other worlds. There are plugins that do that sort of thing. And if you go up there, you'll find that there are like you know. Uh, there's several dozen different plugins that yeah, do see, different things. Hope Player, uh, Prize Win, Pundler. Uh, what do these do? Well, um, they. I mean, I'm gonna. I'm pasting the link in the uh, in the ERC channel as well there at the moment to uh, to the official uh, plugin page. Yeah. But uh, one of them, for instance, is uh, there's one called Simple Auth. And because anybody can join the server, you you know that means that if you go in and let's say that you give yourself the name, um, you know, Jugdish. 
you know, that's the name that you give yourself on the server. But mm -hmm. anybody could put that in their tablet and join it, and then they act like they're you, and they cause damage. And then, you know, you look like you're a complete jerk at that point. It's like, you know, you, well, you know, you, you destroyed the server. You, you know, you did all these sorts of things. No, it wasn't me. It's somebody else that logged in as me. So you install this little plugin called Simple Auth. And Simple Auth, when you log in for the first time, it'll ask you for a password. Okay, so you, when you register your NIC, your, your user ID or your NIC or whatever you want to call it, and, um, and then you choose a password for it so that the next time somebody tries to connect as you, you know, it'll say that particular nick has already been picked, or that you know, um, now you have to give me the password. So right. log in, you know, with the password, and that's how you control access. It's a very simple way of controlling access and making sure that you know, another type of griefing where you basically pretend you're somebody else and cause damage in their names, yeah. that that doesn't happen. So that's that's one of the things. That's something that you should put in right away. And by the way, plugins. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Craig. It's sort of like identity theft. Uh, yeah. But it's exactly what it's like. You know, exactly. it happens all the time, though. I mean, uh, you know, so so if if you're doing this for your kids, you know, for your family or whatever, this is the sort of thing you want to do. Other uh, so so that one's easy. So if you want to install a plugin, that's really easy. You've installed your server, where in the folder, you know, the folder or the directory, whatever you want to call it. In Linux world, we tend to refer to it as a directory, but in the directory where the Minecraft server runs, the Pocket Mine server runs. There's a folder called plugins. So all you do is you just download this little file. It's a it's a, it's a p dot phar file. You just download that. You stick it in the folder. You reload your Minecraft server, and boom, the plugin is is uh, active all of a sudden, just like that. Okay. Um, other things you can do now when you're sitting at the console, you can uh, you know you can do things in there, but maybe you don't want to do that. So there's there's one called pocket doc console where you can run the console for the server in a web browser so that you don't actually have to be logged in at the shell you know to be able to control things you know to ban people to give them things and so forth uh... you can do all that remotely um, there's one called um, uh... there's one called uh... spawn with items mm -hmm. so that you know if you don't want people to have to create you know to go and chop down those three blocks of wood to yeah. create a crafting table so they can create a sword you know and start playing or create, um, you know, um, an axe each time. You can have it so that whenever they join the server, boom, the server gives them those items magically, just like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can create an economy in the server. There's a plugin called Economy, or Pocket Money is another one, uh, where you can basically build a store of items. So you've mined 50 gold blocks, and you want to sell them. Okay. So yeah. all of a sudden, now you have. You, you actually have a virtual economy on the server. You know, you build these signs. It's like, you know, a, a block is, you know, $50 in pocket money for a block of gold. You know, gold goes cheap on the server. What can I tell you? <laughs> well, it is, it's sort of like inventory items, but I, on World of Warcraft, people uh, like, you actually sell them for real cash. You know, uh, the, the, well, this is fake money, though. This is great. This is fake money. So yeah. you, you, you're you doing the same thing. You're creating this economy, but it's a virtual economy where, you know, sure, somebody controls the money to some degree, mm -hmm. but, you know, you're just, you know, you're, you're moving things back and forth, and you don't actually have to spend a lot of money. Uh, one of the things that's really annoying with a lot of these games, and, and, you know, anybody out there who's listening to this who has kids mm -hmm. who didn't know up front, you know, what I'm, you, you know where I'm going with this here. You didn't know this up front, okay? You downloaded Clash of Clans or, 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 or you know, goodness help us all. Um, what's that stupid uh, one with, the, with the, 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 the one which is basically a clone of Bejeweled, uh, Candy Crush? Yeah, yeah Candy okay. Crush. Yeah, I know the king's gonna get peeved at me for saying that, but come on, it's a clone <laughs> of it's a clone of, of Bejeweled, right? Um, so, <laughs> so but Candy Crush, it's like, oh, you know, you've played up to this level. Do you want to continue? Well, you can get additional, you know, gems or whatever it is. And you're the parent who didn't know that when they say yes, I want some additional ones, your credit card just got dinged <laughs> for buying additional things. So at the end of the month, when you're looking at your bill. You're, you know, uh, yeah, exactly. You're sitting there thinking, okay, Marcel. Marcel speaks like he's he's been caught by this one. Yes. <laughs> so you sit there and you go, dude, 
what are you doing? It's like you're spending real money. So at that point, you learn that you can go into, you know, you can go to the Google Play Store, adjust your settings, put a PIN number, you know, as a password, so that nobody can buy anything from the Play Store without going through you first. Parents, if you're listening to me out there and you don't already know this, go into the settings for the Play Store, put a password, make sure your kids just can't buy additional stuff because you have no idea how fast that bill can increase. I can imagine. There, I, I, I mean, you know, we've done too many stories about people. It's like, oh yeah, no, I downloaded the Smurf game on my uh, on my phone, and then I look at my credit card or, or uh, I look at my bill, and someone just spent you know fifteen hundred dollars, you know, through iTunes. It, it's, I mean, some games are insidious about it. They'll actually, you know, try to get you to, you know, just impulse buy it. Of course. Mm -hmm. It's it's scary, you know. I I get it. I mean, on on one hand, it's like I get it. You know, that's that's your that's your business model, you know. But 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 it's kind of sneaky, you know. And 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 a lot of times, people just don't know that that's what's happening, you know. Um, you know, I I've had people. It's like you know, you try to explain to them, you know, you're playing with real money, right? It's like, no, I'm not. I just you know, I just say you know, I want to refill my wallet. Yeah, you're refilling your wallet from your credit card. I you know, hear. I hear casinos do the same thing. They try to get you to, you know, separate playing and your actual physical money. So, I mean, it's not much different. Yeah, no, I know, I, and I, and I get it. You know, I I get it that it's, that it's a business model. But on on one hand, you got to ask yourself, just you know, you know, just how, you know, it, 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 I, the word that's stuck in my brain is moral. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> Ethical. You have to ask yourself how ethical this actually is. But anyway, uh, you know. So anyway, I will. We'll, we'll just you know. So so it's it's fake money. You know. So it's good. It's fake money in that respect. You know. It's a way to introduce them to things like Bitcoin. You know, in the real world. You know, virtual currency. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of what you're doing if you set up something like pocket money or or, or the virtual yeah. economy inside Minecraft. Is yeah, you're you know you're buying and selling product, but you're buying and selling product with a virtual currency that you make available to them. Right. Exactly. Okay. But so so it's a good thing. You can also see, you can also get plugins that that deliver prizes. You can get plugins that randomly hand out uh, you know an item. So like all of a sudden you know it'll hand you an apple. You know and and things like apples and bread and a pork chop or something like that in Minecraft is how you regenerate your strength. How you get your strength back? You eat. Um, you know um, so you can learn cool lessons like that. There's one that lets you disguise yourself as mobs. Mobs are are you know the, the villains. Well they can. There are different types of mobs. I mean, like uh, cows and sheep and, mm -hmm. and pigs and stuff like that are mobs. But uh, creepers and zombies and and uh, you know other nasties are also mobs. So you can disguise yourself with those things. I did that to my son because I thought it would be really really fun. Um, in the Pocket Mind server, I'll point out right now, mobs in 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 the full blown mob action that you get. Uh, don't really work yet. I mean, you can you can spawn mobs to some degree, but they don't work. They don't attack you in the way that they do on an actual uh, in an actual Minecraft game or the or the one that you pay for. You know, the actual paid for Minecraft game. However, I did that to my son, so I disguised myself as a creeper because I thought it would be funny. And the first thing he did, of course, he came out here with a sword and killed my character. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no, no, I didn't want you well, to do that. I just wanted, to, I wanted to show you something cool. I mean, kudos, kudos to him for getting a creeper with a sword. That's that, that's risky. <laughs> he's fearless. He's also, he's also the, he, he's also the parkour master. Parkour is like you know you. You, uh, it's like giant obstacle courses that you create and so forth. So there you go. So 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 plugins is one of the things you can do. And of course, there are so many projects and so many things that people are working on and developing. If you've got a hand, you know, if if you're a, a budding programmer, if you're the sort of person that's interested in that sort of thing, um, you know, jump in. Feel free to help. You know, uh, share your talents and so forth, and you know, become a hero to some of the people that are out there developing this stuff. And maybe you two can buy a seven hundred or seventy-five million dollar house in uh, in in Hollywood after <laughs> after Minecraft buys your game. I want all the dollars. I want all the Minecraft exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, uh, you know, for for someone who who seemed really down to earth, I mean, he's spending his money well. He just went out and bought that seventy five million dollar house. Why? Because he could. Yeah, you, know, uh, you have two billion dollars. Seriously. 
here. Come on, seventy-five million is, is is nothing, man. Just buy yourself the big house. Go nuts. <laughs> Pretty much, and, and you know, and, and I was gonna say one of my favorite Minecraft mods is one that you know, uh, it actually emulates another game called Pokemon, and it it, it lets you kind of uh, play Pokemon but using Minecraft. So it's actually you know, Minecraft is really great about becoming anything you want. I mean, it's been described as like. The, the Legos for adults, the, you know, it's it's Legos in game form. It's perfect. So, I mean, if you are bored with Minecraft, you go out on the internet, you do some Googling, and you'll find mods that will make Minecraft a completely different game with a completely different objective, and you find yourself playing it again for another, you know, 15, 20, 30 hours. It's, it's also referred to as a sandbox game, the idea being, you know, kids play in a sandbox. They just, you know, invent and do whatever they whatever they want. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we should remind people out there that you know they can't ask anything they want. It doesn't have to be Minecraft related. No. Um, I, I noticed that inside the uh, chat room there. You know, just yeah. go ahead. Just 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 ask. Anything related to Linux, basically. Anything related to Linux. There there are you know uh, Ben, you you were talking about you know games. There are tons and tons of games that you can uh, that you can download for for uh, you know a Linux server. Like if you've got a Linux box running at home, like a Linux desktop at home. There are tons and tons of things that you can download. I mean, if you fire up uh, your package manager for whatever distribution you happen to be running, and you just look under the heading for games, I mean, there are hundreds of games. Uh, some of them are rated. As by rated, I mean you know somebody bothered to give it a star rating and so forth. Um, and uh, you know, th there are adventure games. There are first-person shooter games. There are arcade games. There are puzzles. There are tons and tons and tons of things that are out there, and you know they're all free for the download. I mean, uh, you know, you talk about the idea of setting up a, a game machine and so forth, but but uh, wow, I mean the the you know the selection that you've got at your disposal, you know, in terms of things to play with and so forth, is pretty dang awesome, you know, uh, in the Linux world, and uh, I highly recommend it. You know, you set up a box, you know, play with it, uh, you know. At some point, we will, you know, I will convert you. I will convince you that it is the way to go. Um, an alternative. Now, one of, you know, just going back to the one of the problems with Minecraft, of course, is that the Minecraft engine itself, okay, is proprietary. Okay, that's something that you can't tweak. All right. So Mojang is the, does the development on, on the tablet edition, does the development on the PC edition, and so forth. If you actually wanted to get in there and actually play with how all this stuff works and learn how it works, including a client, there is a project out there. Now, I will point out right off the bat that it's early days. Okay, It's not as slick as Minecraft by any stretch of the imagination. But if you're, you know... A gamer who you know is also interested in programming, who would like to see how this sort of stuff works, and would like to try their hand at some development, you know, and be able to access the source code for the game itself. There's a project out there called MindTest. M-I-N-E-T-E-S-T. MindTest.net, and I will uh, post that one as well. Um, which you know you can go down there and you can download the source for the whole thing and. Um, you know, and and build it and play with it and find out how the whole thing works. Uh, the the source code is available, you know, for download. Um, it's you know, it's it's a it's a way to you know to try your hand at game development, especially if it's something that you know if it's something that you happen to have an affinity for that you happen to like already. Again, it's not going to be a slick. But if you want to be part of that kind of development, if you want to get a feel for, you know, for what it's like to create a game on your own, this is actually a really good place to go. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I needed more wine. I'm running a... I should have gotten <laughs> water at the break or something. <laughs> well, at the bottom of the hour break, you can run out for wine, some more wine. Oh, all right, all right. More I, wine. I, I, um, I mean, first of all, Minecraft... Um, do we say a price yet? Because you know we're talking all about this, and you know uh, some uh, Linux is all about free, free, free. But I believe if you actually buy a licensed version from uh, Mahjong, it, I, I believe the game's twenty bucks. Or 20, bucks. Twenty-five or thirty? I forget exactly yeah. what it is. We could, we could we could look it out here. Uh, it's it's one of those, and uh, I got my version through the Steam platform, and and I believe you can get it from a, a couple other different sources, but. Uh, but I just use Steam because it updates automatically and that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, if if 
any of this sound interesting to you, especially the the creating the creative side of it? I mean, worth picking up. Yeah, even, Mojang. The, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I, I was gonna say, you know, even though it's uh, quote unquote older, you know, uh, it's been out for a couple of years, still worth getting though. You you can you know you you can see just uh, how they they say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Mm-hmm. Um, you can see just how you know powerful a reach this game has had. You know, and and I mean, there are like millions of kids that are sitting down right now playing it. You know, they should be in bed, <laughs> right? Uh, well, we're you know we're in the, we're in the Eastern time zone here for anybody who's listening out there. You know, uh, Craig and I, Ben, where are you, dude? East- oh yeah, no, South Florida Eastern as well. Okay, so we're all in the Eastern time zone. So, you know, for us, it's like, you know, 20 after 11 at this moment. And, uh, but, you know, you've got kids. It's like, you know, dudes, you should be in bed. But they're sitting under their blankets. And, you know, if I went upstairs, I might even find my kid doing that. No, I know he's asleep because, you know, I left him asleep. But, um, but, you know, they'll be sitting under their covers, you know, with their tablet in hand playing, you know, and so forth. I mean, but there are so many games that are built on that principle. There's like a, there's, you know, there's a game called Blocky Roads where you drive. Blocky. Uh, are, are you familiar blocky roads? Are you familiar with hill? Are you familiar with hill racing? No, I, I'm not. I'm not. Ben is the one that's more familiar with the games than the, than than me. Okay. Hill racing. Yeah, hill racing is like this weird hillbilly racing game. Uh, I say hillbilly because of the kind of vehicle that you're driving at the beginning, and you've got this weird sort of character, and you've got this terrible, awful bucket of a car and you're going up and down these hills and the thing is rattling and shaking and the more you go the more coins you collect and then you can upgrade the type of tires you've got and upgrade the type of engine you've got and all that sort of stuff and it has a pretty huge following now what's interesting is that now somebody created one called block uh, block racing or is that what I called it block racing I could look at it on my tablet yeah. here um, but block racing is somebody basically recreated a Minecraft world you know, block racing that you can run on your Android tablet, and so you're you're like you're you're Steve, you're the Minecraft guy, you know, driving a Minecraft car over a Minecraft landscape. It's just balls of fun, you know. So the the you know, it's it's so popular that you've got you know this this massive this great level of imitation. All these people creating games that are built around the whole concept of the sandboxing of building things and so forth, and um, and just you know. People love that stuff. It's 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 wonderful. So you know, I appreciate uh, something like that that captures that many people's attention. Um, it, 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 now, again, uh, I'm not Ben is the more of the gamer in the family than, than even, even though. Uh, well, first of all, I mean, it doesn't take you know a gamer to know what a, a racing game is. But you know, even even one who is as as diverse and worldly in video games as I, I have not heard of hillbilly racing, bucket race, you know, block racing, bucket racing, what have you. I get the genre, and I have no doubt that Minecraft is completely capable of running and even being very fun in doing that kind of genre. But I hadn't heard that someone had ported, you know, that type of game over. Oh, well, they haven't really. I mean, it's not like they've ported it. What they've well, done it's not is like a port, but you know, recreated. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they've, they've just, they've created that kind of environment so that it feels like you're in that kind of an environment and so forth. Um, and uh, there's, there's one I happen to really, really love. I've got videos that I created. If anybody's really curious, they can search, uh, you know, for Marcel Gagne on. Um, on uh, YouTube, and you'll see that I've created multiple videos. Uh, some of them with my seven-year-old, by the way. Um, you know, uh, I've got you know Minecraft videos running Minecraft, uh, you know, in a Linux environment and so forth. Uh, some of these shared worlds and so forth, so they can see the stuff we've done. There's one called Survival Craft, which is you know a, a similar game, although it's uh, in some ways it's a little bit more realistic uh, and a little bit more dangerous than Minecraft. Um, but uh, but like I said, you know, a Linux a Linux desktop can be a great games machine. It can be a great machine uh, for your kids. Uh, you remember over Christmas I was talking about um, the fact that there are some community organizations that uh, take these boxes. I, I mentioned the Regaloo project. I mentioned uh, 
uh, here at the Computer Recycling Center in Waterloo, where I am, in Kitchener-Waterloo, where I am, where they rebuild some of these boxes and they make them available inexpensively to you know families that can't necessarily afford computers. Um, this is one of those places where Linux is great. You take this, you take this hardware that somebody's not using. Uh, you don't have to pay for the licenses, and all of a sudden you've got a box that's got you know word processing software on it. You've got a box that's got uh, that's got game software on it. You've got uh, you know uh, a whole like anything. You've got programming software. You know and. and Come on, let's face it. Uh, you know, if you've got, uh, sorry, Craig, a Java development environment, or, <laughs> <laughs> or or a C plus plus development environment, or PHP or Perl or whatever, if you've got all that stuff on a box and you don't actually have to pay for any of these development environment, this can be a huge boon for somebody that doesn't have the resources. You know, to be able to learn a skill that they can then you know sell and bank on later in life. Um, this is fantastic stuff. You know, being able to learn to not just play with the machine, but you know, work with it and, and make it you know sing and dance for you and so forth. Uh, um, you know, Linux lets you do that. It lowers that playing field, makes it available to everybody, and then all of a sudden you can say, hey, you know, here's a games machine that that isn't going to cost you anything, and I've loaded it up with a hundred different cool games, none of which we had to pay for. Now. Granted, you can get a lot of free games in the Android world or in the um, in the uh, uh, iOS world, but Ben, tell me what's wrong with all those free games that you download? Because you have that they're, they're just introductions, and then you have they're to paid to yeah. not, they're paid the pay to play. You get the first two or three levels, and then you get hooked, and then they try to make you pay for every little thing. Or they're loaded with ads. You can't play the game uh. because every time you play for five seconds, you know you you know. You, you, you bump into something, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm sorry, your character died. Now you must watch a 10-second video. <laughs> it's like... Oh, geez. It is you know, there, there are tons of these things out there. Again, I'm not... I'm not, you know, uh, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to judge this because I understand that's the business model. Remember Flappy Bird? You guys know Flappy Bird? Oh no, I'll judge it. Uh, that that, it, you know, <laughs> when, when you put core features of a game behind a paywall, you know, and and then you call it free. That is not good sportsmanship. That is not good business. I agree. I you know, agree. It, it, if it's core, then it should be available from the get-go, or make it or pay for it. Yeah, but some games don't. Some games they're not doing that. They're not hiding core functions behind the paywall. What they're doing is they're making you watch ads constantly. Yeah. Okay. So and and gameplay becomes just just phenomenally horrible. You know. I uh, remember I mentioned the game Mind Test that you could download. And, uh, remember, remember I mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, again. If you if you give that to your kids, this I'm, I mention that one from the perspective of learning game development, of actually getting involved and doing some fun things in terms of game development. That's why I mention that one because it's not really ready for prime time. And if you give it to your kids as opposed to buying them a copy of Minecraft for the tablet, they will not like you. All right, listen, uh, we're, <laughs> at, we're we're at the bottom of the hour here, and uh, Marcel can go out and get a glass of wine. <gasps> refill <laughs> and then uh, we'll continue on uh, by the way don't forget that uh, uh, tomorrow is the last night for our Logitech contest we're going to close it out at midnight eastern time so get over to our contest page at computeramerica.com and get your entry in All right, midnight it shuts down you listen to the Computer America show on the IRN radio network on the Boost radio network and the Blog Talk radio network it's our all-Linux show. Marcel Gagné continues on with us. We're going to have another news tip and review from Marty Winston. That's all coming up on Computer America. Looking for a best friend? Brother Wolf Animal Rescue has your best friend waiting just for you. Their mission is to protect and enhance the lives of companion animals and the people who love them. Their no-kill rescue shelter is open year-round, making it easy for people to adopt their best new friend. This year, Brother Wolf will find homes for over 2,400 orphaned dogs, puppies, cats, and kittens. All have ended up as an orphan through no fault of their own. Brother Wolf has created a safe, nurturing environment where these special animals can heal emotionally and physically until they find a lifelong home. Their life-saving transport program brings dogs and puppies from overcrowded shelters in the south to rescues in the north where homes are easier to find. Brother Wolf Animal Rescue is a 501c3 organization. To learn more about their life-saving work and to make a donation, visit their website at www.bwar.org. That's www.bwar.org. Help to realize Brother Wolf's vision when no animal is euthanized for lack of a home. Who's a good boy?
Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-866-663-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. So, disable the cable and get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-866-663-MY-TV. Right now, to sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and up to four rooms. And there's no equipment to buy. That includes your free HD TV upgrade, your free DVR upgrade, and your free professional installation. And the best part, the pristine digital picture and sound. Call 1-866-663-MY-TV. So, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1-866-663-MY-TV. 1-866-663-MY-TV. Disable the cable, cut costs, and get more. Call 1-866-663-MY-TV. 1-866-663-MY-TV. I've been expecting you. This is Marty Winston with a News Tips Bullet Review for Computer America. This time... The Sengled Pulse LED speaker. Sometimes the early entries in a category get enough things wrong that you think the category itself is a non starter. But then, when you least expect it, a new product gets it so right that you end up just grinning. That's what happened to us with the Pulse LED speaker by Sengled. It comes with a master unit and a satellite, each shaped enough like a BR30 flood lamp that it fits most places those bulbs go. As a 2700 degree Kelvin warm white LED, each is good for 600 lumens in a directed 105 degree pattern. An amplified speaker inside delivers 13 watts of audio per channel, enough for most residential rooms. Bluetooth 2.1 EDR makes it compatible with many sources and an app offers handset or tablet control of volume and brightness as well as a variety of equalization presets. Bottom line, the Sengled Pulse LED speaker fits stereo sound behind bright floodlights that fit almost any BR30 fixture. This is Marty Winston with a News Tips Bullet Review for Computer America. Welcome back to the Computer America Show. It's uh, Bob of the Hour, and we are, you know, talking to Marcel Gagné. It's our all Linux show, but you know, uh, we're talking about gaming and Linux, and uh, you know, actually, uh, Marcel, is this gaming and Linux, or is this Minecraft and Linux? Like this, this show segment. Uh, you're you're muted, Mar Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> Curses! I was muted. Yes. I was muted. <clears throat> it happens to the best of us. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, now why why is the wine a different color now that you're drinking? You know, actually, actually, it's it's no longer wine now. It looks like apple juice. No, actually, it's Gatorade. <laughs> Gatorade, okay. <laughs> Gatorade wine. Yeah, you never heard of it? <laughs> All right. Uh. <laughs> it's Gatorade red wine and Red Bull mixed together. What can I tell? <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> I'm going to patent it, whatever it is. <laughs> Headache. No, I mean, I, I started mentioning Minecraft because because there's so many ways to, to integrate it into, you know, into a Linux environment. And, and, I mean, if you go on the forums, if you go on the PocketMind forums and you take a look and they talk about, you know, what's the best way to host a PocketMind server, there is no argument whatsoever. The best way to do it is on a Linux box. I mean... You know, beginning and finito. That's the best way to do it. It's the most, you know, it's the most advanced of the development. It's uh, it's where you've got the most flexibility. It's where it's the easiest. Of course, you've got the highest level of security. I mean, uh, you know, let's we're we're not going to get into a you know a, a Windows versus Linux for security thing tonight. But let's face it. I mean, Linux security beats you know pretty much anything that's out there. Nothing's perfect, but it certainly is you know a better alternative. Um, but uh, you know, but yeah, it's. Uh, I, I wanted to focus on on Minecraft, but it can be anything related to gaming. Now, somebody I, I noticed somebody there mentioning about you know being Linux being too geeky and nerdy and so forth. You know, um, we've come so far. I, I mean, I want to address that because it's sitting in there, and it's one of those things that you know to this day it's like 
I mentioned the idea that you know uh, the first introduction of Linux, the Linux kernel, was August twenty fifth, nineteen ninety one, which also happens to be my wedding anniversary, oh. August twenty fifth, nineteen ninety one. The same day, it's a coincidence. <laughs> no, it actually, it's on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I found that out later. I was writing my first book, and of course, I was copying down the uh, you uh -huh. know the famous letter you know from Linus Torvalds. I went, "Holy cow! That's like my wedding anniversary. That's so cool!" I showed it to my wife, and it's like, "Oh, that's so cool!" You know. Yeah, we were geeking out on that one too. Anyway, um, I love my wife. She's an awesome. Uh, you know, she she doesn't do this anymore, but she's she's an awesome programmer. You know, she's uh, yeah. so I have a huge amount of respect for programmers. Okay. But anyway, um, so so you know, there, there's still this weird idea that you know Linux has to be geeky and has to be hard to work with and so forth. But you know what? If you set up a modern Linux desktop, and I'm talking about, I mean, there's tons of them out there. Uh, if you want to set up something for business, you can set up a Fedora or Red Hat desktop. Uh, you can set up, a, a, you know, an OpenZUSA desktop. If you want something for home, you know, uh, somebody joked in there, Puppy Linux. If you've got a little, you know, if you've got a machine that doesn't have a lot of, of horsepower, you can set up Puppy Linux. Uh, there are obviously a whole pile of different distributions out there. Uh, Ubuntu, Linux Mint. Linux Mint is a great user-friendly distribution that's basically got you covered on, you know, so many fronts. It's it's just scary. But it's it it doesn't have to be difficult. Under the surface, okay, a guy like me um, who you know likes to have access to everything can have access to everything. I can tweak it, you know, uh, from here till doomsday. I can I can drop down to the shell. I can do all sorts of wondrous things. But I can work entirely in a graphical environment that's as nice and friendly as anything that exists in the Windows world. And you know what? Let's let's be blunt here, okay? With the advent of Windows 8.1, mm -hmm. I'd say that Linux is actually now more user friendly and functional than Windows, okay? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people out there, I think, are going to agree with me on this one. All right? <laughs> there you go. It's you know, it it doesn't have to be geeky. It can be extremely friendly, extremely easy to use. My parents, who are you know in their late 70s, use a Linux desktop. They've been using a Linux desktop for years. Yeah, they've got me if they want to call me. But the fact is, they don't call me every day. They they do what people do on you know on their computers. They surf the web. They you know they visit websites. They write and send email. They uh, they chat on Skype. You know with uh, with their you know with their family in another province. That sort of thing. These are the sorts of things that people do, and you don't actually have to be you know. Uh, you don't have to be geeky, you know, or a computer scientist to be able to do those things. Everybody can do those things. What's the hottest laptop that people were buying just recently? It's it's the hottest laptop on the market right now. What is it? The Chromebook. Chromebooks. What do Chromebooks run? Linux. Well, the, they run the Chrome OS, but now you can run Linux on them. They just, we just the Chrome OS is Linux. Yeah, it's, it's 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 Google's. They, they had something, didn't they? Have something? We had a story, Ben, about that they that you could run Linux in a full window or something. No, I think that was a Chromecast. No, no, no. It was a, it was the Chromebook. They did something else with. They did something where you could run Linux full window. I, I got to go back and research the story, but they they and it was just like a week ago that they did this. But anyway, I digress. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's my line. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Chrome, Chrome OS, I mean, Chrome OS is is built on Linux. I mean, that's that is what it is. Okay, right. um, but it's it is now like you know the the most popular uh, you know mobile device. They're talking about it. Uh, you know, I mean. There's a uh, there's a Business Insider article. Hey, you know it's one of uh, countless, but I just pulled it up at random, so I'll, I'll paste it in there, which talks about the idea that it has the potential. It actually says, experts say the Chromebook has the potential to dominate the education markets. You mm -hmm. know, uh, Chromebooks are gaining traction, uh, which is a major concern for Apple because they're outselling iPads. Okay, um, Chromebooks are a Linux desktop. Okay. They're a modern Linux desktop, almost entirely browser-based, because everything happens that runs inside the Chrome browser. But the fact of the matter is, it's a Linux, you know, it's a Linux PC. It, it doesn't have to be geeky and weird. I mean, you you can make it as simple as you want, but you can also make it as complex as you want. Um, the, the core of it is flexibility. What do you want to be able to do with your system? Well, you know what? I want to be able to do everything with my system. You know, and some people are like that, right? Yep, that's true. That's true. Look, you know, um, and they're called nerds. Yes, some, right. but some people are the self proud. The yeah. proud. 
But some people are still put off by it. They just uh, they just they uh, they, they don't want to. They don't want to tinker, or you know. I mean, uh, one of our, our participants in the chat room said that you know we're still put, you know, we're still intimidated by the fact that you know it was so open that you know he didn't. I, I think he just wanted it to work and didn't want to tinker. Yeah, and you and you don't have to do that. That's why I said you know you down you know and and unfortunately I think that you know I mean I don't know how old this person is. I mean you know on the internet no one knows how old you are. No. Um, but um, I I know the joke is on the internet no one knows your dog. You know that old cartoon you know of a dog sitting at a computer typing. Yeah. Remember that one? Did you it's, see old, it's a classic. It's a classic. Yep. Yep. My little dog it was holding out Jasmine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What, anyway, um, so so I mean I don't know how old this person is, or you know when the last time they tried a Linux distribution was, but hey, things have come a long, long way. I mean we're talking 1991, and development in the Linux world has screamed by pretty much everything that's out there. The open source development model is used by businesses all over the world, including I might add Microsoft. Uh huh. Really. Okay. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I used to try to explain how the open source development model worked by saying something like this, and I, I think I even used it on the last show, but I'll say it again anyway. <laughs> let's, say that, let's say that you wanted to develop a word processor, so you sat down at, like from scratch, okay? If you wanted to create an apple pie from scratch, you would first have to create the universe. Who yeah. did I just quote? Carl Sagan. Anyway. That's right. Yeah, it threw me yeah. up because, because you didn't say billion with billions. Uh, well, I didn't, but I was quoting Carl Sagan there. Yeah. But if you wanted to create a word processor from scratch, you'd have to create an assembly language, a computer programming language, which is why you know, which is why software patents are idiotic because you have to build on top of things. You can't build from scratch. Software patents are idiotic. Yeah. Everybody out there listening, tell them that software patents are idiotic for that reason because <laughs> you're always standing on the shoulders of somebody else who did the work before you. You can't. Do it from scratch. You know, just don't don't try to convince me of that. You can't do it from scratch. You have to build on the work of other people. That's just the way it is. Because you're going to use a programming language that somebody else built. But I digress. Anyway, so uh, where did I just hear that line? <laughs> <laughs> I'm e I, I'm easily distracted. Have you noticed that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, so let's say that you wanted to build a word processor from scratch. Um, you could sit there and you can say, okay, it's going to take me, uh, you know, a, a, a thousand employees. You know, I'm going to have to spend, uh, you know, uh, have uh, 100 employees spend, you know, 10,000 hours working on this. Uh, I estimate that it's going to cost me, uh, you know, uh, four million dollars to develop this from scratch. And you go, holy cow! You know, I don't have four million dollars in my company to be able to develop this. So what you do is you do with that, you know, with the gentleman who uh, called from Indiana at the beginning. I think it was Indiana, or was it Louisiana? Yes, it was, no, Indiana. Okay, it was Indiana. He called from Indiana, and he was talking about, you know, gamification. And I said, so what you do is you say, look, you know, I can't possibly build this. You know, I don't have the resources. This isn't a business. I'm trying to do something for my community, or maybe it is a business. Okay, but the cost of developing this is just so far beyond what is financially feasible for the company that the best thing I can do is open source it. What does open source do? It means that you suddenly recognize that you know what, you're not the only person in the world who wants a word processor. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what you do is you involve other people in the development of, pro of that project and what you do is you assign a license to it like the, uh, the GPL which says you can use this code, you can even resell the stuff but you have to share all the development that you make on on this project with other people. In other words, you know, share and share alike. So all of a sudden now, you build an application that your company needs, this million dollar or four million dollar, let's call it a million dollar word processor, your company needs this. But a lot of other companies need that as well. So all of a sudden what you said is, look, I'm going to spend a thousand dollars developing this in employee time. And a thousand other companies are going to spend a thousand dollars developing this. And all of a sudden, a thousand companies have a million dollar piece of software by having spent only a thousand dollars. You know what? That's good business. Yeah, it is. That's excellent business. And that's part of what the open source development model makes it. And that's why companies, and I'm talking companies, you know, around the world, the majority of companies, there was a poll, and I forget by who uh, follows this stuff, but, you know, uh, one of the big uh, technology uh, watching firms, uh, I don't know, Gartner, you know, one of these people. I don't know who. Somebody can look it up. Uh, but they basically, they basically found that pretty much every company on the planet uses open source for development, you know, or in their business. They just do. You know, and I'm not even talking about the basics of the fact that you use the open source whenever you use the Internet. 
you know, uh, you know, or whenever you're trying to send an email or something like that. I'm talking about software. You know, they're they're either using software or they're developing, you know, using open source software. It's good business. Everybody does it. So you know, saying, well, you know, it's it's just too geeky or whatever. You know, the world runs on open source software. The world uses it. Everybody uses it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it makes it makes good sense to do that, and that's probably what. Uh, and, and you know, uh, uh, computer, we, we can kind of say it all the time, but I mean, I think it's only a matter of time, though. I mean, it was only in the 90s when computers were for nerds, and now everyone uses computers, and now it's, luckily, it's just kind of, you know, contained in, well, Linux and alternative operating systems are for nerds. You know, Apple's for hipsters, Windows is for stupid people, and Linux <laughs> is for no, nerds. No, 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 Windows is not for stupid people. <laughs> but, 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 you know what I mean? Like, uh, the... Public perception, like it changes over, you know. So, so I think Linux, it's just a matter of time before. So, you know, good that you're putting your voice out there, but I think regardless, it it's gonna shift. You know, time. you know, my 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 uh, my 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 buddy here, um, who yeah. you know happens to be a computer program. Uh, <laughs> you know what this is? You know what this is? Anyway, <laughs> see, the, people, this is why you should be watching this on Hangouts because you can see you can see you know. Plastic toy is being used inside the show. Um, this is Megatron, or not Megatron? Ah, Megabyte. Megabyte. Anyway, yes, it's Megabyte. Anyway, um, the the point is that um, what was the point? <laughs> um, the point is that the software. You know, we say, well, you know, when's the year of the Linux desktop? Well, Linux, the year of the Linux desktop isn't coming. It's come and gone. Uh, my buddy Larry, you know Larry Bushy, who you know uh, yeah. just recently retired from the show, um, had a show recently. I don't know, three months ago or something like that, where he was talking about you know the operating system doesn't matter anymore. Yes, right? I know. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. And and in a sense, you know, he's right. And he said the operating system doesn't matter, so you might as well use Linux. And that's because we use, of course, so many resources. Oh my God, I've torn him in half. <laughs> <laughs> we use so many resources that are web-based now. You know, we use our email web-based. Um, uh, ben, you talked about the you know you're 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 praising uh, HTML5. Okay, yeah, it's true. We can build an amazing number of applications that run entirely inside a web browser. Okay, so you know, when's the year of the Linux desktop? Well, you know, I'm gonna say that it was probably this year when the Chromebooks took off in a big way, or just this past year when the Chromebooks took off in a big way, because all of a sudden people were, you know, uh, mil- you know, hundreds of thousands of people uh, in the U.S. What, 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 what were those numbers? Seven hundred and fifty thousand Chromebooks were sold, or something like that. Um, is, is that what the numbers were? I mean, somebody go back and reread the article. I'm not gonna look at it right now, but you know, sold. Tons and tons and tons of Chromebooks, and they're all running essentially a Linux OS, you know, in an HTML5, you know, rich environment, namely the the Chrome web browser, because, you know, the web is you know your operating system now, mm-hmm. okay, for a lot of things. And obviously, not everything, but a lot of things. Ooh, what are you holding up? What are you holding up? I've got a transformer here too. It, it, right now, he looks like a calculator, but it's a transformer. Okay, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This this is a transformer as well, and I can't I, I can't put him back together into a car. <laughs> it's Bumblebee, and I I'm, I've been uh. been trying to put him back together into a car, and I can't. <laughs> Drive me crazy. Uh. Anyway, um, yeah. So the the year of the Linux desktop, it's it's already happened. It was 2014, and uh, you know, and we're just going to keep on going with that because uh, you know the the internet is now our operating system, and the internet is Linux. Yes, it is. Well, you know, so so many things that, that, that the internet is powered by uh, run on Linux or run Linux servers. So it's it's it's. Uh, I mean, it, it's so much smaller. It's more compact, and uh, because having to load on a, the Windows environment is uh, is a lot more bulky. Or it can be monstrously huge. That's it cool. can be huge. Supercomputers, the world's supercomputers. What do they all run on? Linux. Let me hear it. There you go. Supercomputers. You know, all those all those render farms in Hollywood and so forth. They're all running Linux. Oh, because it's big and small. You can run a little tiny. They don't want to waste. We're going to say Java. Well, no, they don't. They want to waste the processing power on the overhead. <laughs> they just want. They want to get to do the job, and that's what Linux allows them to do. No question about that. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, we're, we're, we've got about ten minutes left in the uh, hour, so why don't you summarize here a little bit, uh, 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 Marcel? About uh, all right. 
All right, so let's let's go back to where we started from, just for fun. So for the people that uh, that missed it at the beginning, or the, you know that have been hanging on the whole time, the point was, hey, you want to have a lot of fun? Set up a Linux box um, and set up a Minecraft uh, uh, pocket edition or personal edition, whatever you want to call it, server for your kids and uh, and your family and so forth, so that you've got a nice safe place to play. And the way you do that is, of course, you're going to have an Android tablet, or you're going to have an iPad, or you know something like that that's running Minecraft Pocket Edition or Personal Edition, whichever it is, Minecraft PE anyway. And uh, you're going to head over to PocketMind.net, and you're going to download yourself. Uh, you're going to use the download links that are there, and uh, you're going to install a Pocket Mind server on a Linux box. Uh, the easiest and most wonderful thing. If Marcel runs on Linux. <laughs> That is funny. Thank you. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I wonder if Marcel runs on Linux, but probably requires a lot of wine. See, there's the uh, pun intended because wine is the Linux uh, program that allows you to run Windows. On that is correct. Uh, That's yeah. funny. I like that. That's great. I'm going to steal that. <laughs> um, get your say. You know, if you don't have a Linux box. Go out there, take a look at one of the uh, at one of the VPS providers out there. There are a whole pile of them. You can use you can use Amazon if you want, but Amazon is, you know, I, I like Amazon. I mean, I actually use Amazon's um, you know uh, virtual server farm and so forth, but it can be pretty expensive mm. to use. I mean, they've got some small things, but it it's probably a lot cheaper to go with one of the uh, small VPS providers. And like I said, Linode.com is is a great one to use. I know there are a bunch of other ones. Maybe you guys know some, and you want to recommend some. You know, in the show notes, uh, I don't know what you've used out there, but that's it's it's a great way to try, you know, to, to actually try distribution. But it's also a great way to set up a server that's accessible uh, on the internet. Hey, you can run your own web server as well if you want, you know, um, you know, or an email server, you know, a whole bunch of different things. Or you can run a Minecraft Pocket Edition server uh, on there. Get yourself some plugins. Uh, there, you know, uh, make sure you get the uh, simple auth. You're going to want that one to make sure that uh, that your kids don't get caught. Uh, you know, uh, somebody stealing their user IDs or whatever. Um, set set yourself up a, an economy. Uh, you can even download one called Kill Money, where you're yep. allowed to kill you're allowed to kill other characters for money. Not that I'm not that I'm uh, <laughs> not that I'm in any way endorsing that. But let's face it, you do player versus player stuff, right? PvP. Yeah. You play against other players. Yeah. I told you, my my kid. I I you know I, I disguised myself as a creeper and he, he struck me down like right away. <laughs> Seven year old, it's just terrible. I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have trouble living that one down. Yeah. yeah so get yourself some cool plugins, and uh, you know, open it up. Uh, I, I made these little cards that you know I printed up, you know, with the server address and the port, you know, that they connect and so forth. And I stuck it in his lunchbox so he could take it to school and hand it out to all his friends. And you know what? It has been balls of fun. You know, the, I mean, they love it. It's this, it's this great, you know. Interactive environment that they all get to, you know, hang out together in and, and play together. And, um, you know, uh, people talk about the idea that you spend time in front of these things, you know, and it's, you know, you're not socializing. Yeah, you are. You know, they they sit there and they talk for hours and they build things together. You know, and it's this it's this wonderful interactive marketplace. Uh, it's 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 lovely. I think it's 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 lots of fun. Have you ever read a book called Ready Player One? Ready Player One? No, I have not. No. Oh. Oh, come on, you guys, 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 pick it up, okay? Right. Pick up your Kobo or your Kindle or whatever and download Ready Player <laughs> One, okay? What's, what's, what's the name of the author here? Somebody tell me the name of the author really quickly here. Um, anyway, Ready Player One is, uh, is about a, a near future world in which uh, everybody lives inside. Uh, it's Ernest Klein, Re uh, Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. And the title comes from the old... Um, the old uh, computer games where it actually came up and said Ready Player One. Remember that? Yeah, right. Huh? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. Remember that? I mean, the, those old games. Oh, by the way, there's also um, the uh, the the Internet Archive, archive.org, which uh, runs on Linux. Oh, come on, it runs on Linux. Sorry, the Internet Archive actually has a has opened up a whole pile of classic yes. DOS games. Yes, we actually did a news stories on that. We can get Isn't all. Isn't that cool? So you can go on the Internet Archive and play Donkey Kong. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's just so cool. I want to go. I want to go there. Have they had Joust? The, I, the, well, you know, of course, the Internet Archive is is trying to get everything from the Internet. Uh, everything since with the '90s and everything. Yeah, you know, they they really should hook up with Google. Seriously, 
Yeah. I mean, those, they're doing kind of the same thing, you know. The Internet Archive should hook up with Google. They should, they should, you know, uh, pat each other's back, you know, or scratch each other's back, that sort of thing, it, you know. See, but then you get those people who, who are trying to erase information from Google. So that's not what the uh, archive is about. All right, then we need to create another Google. We need to create oh. a secondary Google protected. Oh, wait a minute. That is the Internet Archive. <laughs> all right, all right. Never mind. Anyway, um, yeah. So Ready Player One is, uh, you know, people are like people. It's it's you know, in in some strange way, it's kind of where we're going. People do their learning in cyberspace. People interact in cyberspace. They meet each other in cyberspace. They play games in cyberspace. They go to school in cyberspace. All this other sort of stuff. Because quite frankly, life in the outside world in this particular you know uh, in this particular book kind of sucks. Although there's, you know, a bright glimmer of hope at the end. I won't actually tell you what it is. Because you have to read the book. It's great. Everybody out there that's listening, go pick up a copy of Ready Player One. I am not the author. I do not know the author. But it's awesome. It's filled with 1980s pop culture references. If you lived through the 80s, okay, if you were alive in the 80s, old enough to listen to music and watch TV and stuff like that, you're going to love this book. That's a little too young for that, but I remember them. I think I was conceived in the 80s. Maybe. <laughs> That'll do. Yeah, that... <laughs> How young are you, dude? Good grief. He's a young kid. Uh, just that. 24. Just turned 24. So. Just turned 20, and he has no curiosity. I'm just shocked. I'm just kidding, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Ben's Martha. gonna hate me. He's gonna hang up afterwards. He's gonna keep you online. He's gonna say, "I don't ever want that guy to come that back." That guy. When's Larry getting back? <laughs> hey, Marcel. Why don't you tell the listeners? I mean, what are you up to these days? I mean, what are they, uh, um, you have a you link. Know, Oh, um, I mean, I, I still occasionally write columns and publish them online. Believe it or not, I'm actually not doing it for any magazine at the moment. My books are obviously still available out there. I have, I have like, I, I published something like, I mean, I did Linux Journal for about 10 years. I've published in about 20 different magazines. Uh, on the Internet, there are about like eight or 900 articles that I've written out there, including stuff that's on my cookingwithlinux.com website and uh, my marcelgagne.com website. We have I'm developing links. software for e-book readers. Right. We have links, um, we have links to that correspondence to your websites. Is that thank you. I appreciate that. Um, if, you, uh, if, if any of you out there have a Kobo, you know, the, uh, the, the, the Kobo e-book right. reader, um, there is a site, uh, um, Kindle has its own thing, but uh, there's a site out there that has a, um, called Writing Life, Kobo Writing Life, where authors can self-publish their own work to the Kobo uh, ebook platform. Nice. Well, the, the conversion <laughs> platform, I wrote that. Oh. Um, so, so I've been doing a lot of work with, uh, with uh, you know, in, in the ebook world and in the uh, ebook publishing world and so forth. And of course, I still, uh, you know, I still participate in the uh, Linux and open source world. It's, uh, you know, uh, it's it's something that I'm I'm fascinated by. It's something I'm passionate about. It's something I believe in. I, I believe in the open source uh, model. I believe in uh, in open development. I believe in uh, in the sharing of information. And um, and that's not something that's going to be anytime soon. Well, Marcel, uh, we're going to see you again next month on the 19th and, uh, and uh, for uh, another interesting – this has been a lot of fun, and uh, we're going to see you again next month uh, when you'll pick another topic for us. Uh, stay with us to the end, okay, because we're going to have our after show uh, thing with our live video streaming. This is Computer America. Tomorrow night, we're going to have Tessero on the show. They make some very interesting uh, keyboards and mice. Uh, they have some uh, mechanical keyboards. They got some really cool stuff, and they're going to be on the first gaming, hour. Uh, gaming peripherals, actually. And then an hour two, computer and technology news brought to you by Slimware Utilities. It's all coming up tomorrow night. Thanks again to Marcel Gagne. So until tomorrow night, this is Craig Crossman hoping that your hard disk never becomes floppy. Ten seconds. We'll see you tomorrow night. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. All right, and uh, thanks to everybody for watching uh, us on uh, our live Computer America video streaming page. And uh, we will see you tomorrow night with Tessero and Computer News. Thanks again, Marcel, for being yeah, you're, here. You're welcome. Well, thanks for having me on. Are there still people out there who actually know what a floppy disk is? Yeah. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Shocking. Yeah, they, I know. They do, yeah. You know, I, I, actually, I actually have... A box down there, a five and a quarter inch floppy disk. Oh and I'm talking like I'm talking like you know, 
A yeah. couple hundred. I don't know why I keep them. Oh, you need I them. have nothing I can read them on. No, that's what happens. Eventually, you don't have any more equipment. To, uh, even the equipment no. is bad. You, you know, it's, it's, uh, Ben will sometimes finish the show when I say that. Ben will say, what's a floppy? You know, so, so he'll, he'll do that. And we call them stiffies, the three-and-a-half-inch ones. Yeah. When they first came out, we called them stiffies. So we had floppy disks and stiffies. Stiffies, yeah, three-and-a-half inches. And then zip disks. All right, listen, everybody, thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow night. Again, thanks, Marcel, for being here with us. Uh, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> good night.